Red Rock, north of Tombstone, Arizona Territory. Early morning, November 8, 1881. Robert Pickett, accused of a murder in Tombstone, he was to be returned to Tombstone to stand trial in the United States Circuit Court. You let me out of here! You ain't got no right to hold me in here! You hear me? You let me out of here! You'll get out when the sheriff from Tombstone picks you up, and not before. Now shut up and lie down! You ain't got no right to hold me in here. I didn't shoot nobody in Tombstone. Now why don't you lay down like the sheriff says? Jail ain't so bad once you get used to it. Yeah. Well, I ain't ever gonna get used to it. Not never. Then lay down. On the bench. Oh, sir. We can break clean out of here, kid. But I didn't kill nobody in Tombstone. He can't hold me for that. Maybe. But that Tombstone sheriff's gonna pick you up anyway. Right or wrong. Now try it my way. Free or dead. There ain't no in between. All right. You tell me what I gotta do. It's easy. I ain't a man exactly without friends. An actual account from the pages of my newspaper, the Tombstone Epitaph. This is the way it happened, in the town too tough to die. Tombstone Territory. That same morning, November 8, 1881, I finished a small notice about the capture in Red Rock of one Robert Pickett, accused of killing a storekeeper about a year ago. I put my paper to bed. I went to look in on the sheriff, Clay Hollister, who was riding out to Red Rock. Oh, Harris. You're up kind of early. Late. Up kind of late. Excuse me. Oh, thanks, Jim. Sometimes I get the same feeling about bedding down my press that you do about saddling your own horse. Yeah, I know what you mean. Do it yourself, you know it's done right. Particularly for a long ride. Where you headed, Sheriff? Uh, business. I hear you're going to Red Rock. I'm going over to Johnsonville. I thought maybe we'd ride part way together. Two are a lot better than one with the Apaches straying off the reservation the way they are. Well, sometimes with Apaches, it's better to ride alone. All right, you have it your way. Rumor is you're bringing Bob Pickett back for trial. Sheriff Pickett's a no-good killer. Bringing him back's a waste of time. If it was up to me, I'd let my 45 save the taxpayers some money. Mr. Dempsey, under the law, a man is innocent until he's proven guilty. You don't know Bob Pickett. He's a ruthless murderer. He shot my partner down in cold blood. Everybody knows how you feel about him, Mr. Dempsey. But uh, I think I'll wait for a jury's verdict. All right. Like I said, you, uh, you have it your way. Clay, take Jim with you. I gotta leave somebody here to mind the store. He's been talking revenge ever since Pickett killed his partner. Well, there's no place in the law for revenge. Nor in a newspaper. It could spoil an editor's whole purpose. In a law, man, it could spoil his aim. Remember now, Pickett. When we hit that street, you grab the first horse you see. Don't make 
desk and pick up them keys. Now, you got a wife, Sheriff. You ain't gonna be much good to her dead. Hold it. I'd pitch it here. Real easy. Real easy. Well, I wasn't shooting at you. I was shooting at them. How many of them were there? Well, there's one this morning, but three haven't been following me since noon, but I've only seen two around here. Where's your horse? He's down there. You better go get him. Same day, Hugh Dempsey rode the trail to Red Rock and Johnsonville. Dempsey was determined that Pickett would never return to Tombstone. the horses. Well, what about them Apaches? I just have to take our chances. Might as well eat. You know, it's a little risky traveling around this country without food and water. Well, I was only going as far as Johnsonville. And them Apaches forced me out of my way. Yeah, well, I got enough for two. <laughs> well, thanks a lot. I won't eat much. Not much of a selection. This isn't the Maison Dore. Are you from Tombstone? Yeah. You ever eat at the Maison Dore? That lobster from the Gulf? No, I ain't never been to Tombstone. But I heard about the Maison Dore. How far do you suppose we are from Johnsonville? With or without Apaches. <laughs> well, I don't suppose we've got much choice about that, have we? 
No. Should take you about half a day, depending on how long it takes to get through Apache Pass. Say, um, I owe you a thanks for this morning. Oh, that's all right. You think that minions are still following us? Uh, it's kind of hard to say. What part of the country are you from? And me? <clears throat> I'm from Oklahoma. Where are you headed? Red Rock. What part of Oklahoma? Oh, uh, the northwest part of the country. Well, what do they call you in the northwest part of Oklahoma? Uh, gray, sunny gray. This is your uh, first brush with Apaches, isn't it? Yeah. Well, we don't have any this wild like this back in Oklahoma. It's a white man. Well, I'm sure glad of that. Yeah. We can use all the eyes we can get going through this country. It's Hugh Dempsey. Hugh Dempsey? Yeah, Hugh Dempsey. Do you know him? Put that away, Dempsey. That's right, Mr. Dempsey. You don't need it. I don't. You put down that rifle. Now drop your gun belt. Drop it. What's this all about? You know who this man is? Yeah, I just met him. His name's Gray. <laughs> this is the man you started out to get. His name is Bob Pickett. Noon, November 8, 1881. The party headed back to Tombstone. Now Sheriff Hollister knew a great deal more than he had before. He suspected even more than that. I'm gonna let him know at Tombstone you gave a murderer back his gun. This is Apache country. You can't let a man go unarmed. Don't draw that gun, Pickett! All right, hold it. Get out of here, Pickett. Save yourself. All right, now, Sheriff, give me your guns, one at a time. I guess you know he tried to shoot you in the back. That's a lie. He figured it was safe. He tricked you into going for your gun, then the killing would be self-defense. That's another lie. I just tried to draw his attention so you could get away. I don't want to hear it from you, Sheriff, and I don't want no lies about it. Charge against you in Tombstone's murder. I never killed anybody. Dempsey says you did. Hogwash. Just suppose you tell me who he said I killed. His partner. <sighs> Son, I never said any such thing. As soon as we get back to Tombstone, you can check on it. Dempsey laid the complaint against you. It's a matter of record. Dempsey killed his partner, Sheriff, and I saw him do it. Pickett, you just saw me try to save you. Can't you see he's lying, he's trying to split us up, and you're letting him do it? Now he's gonna have to kill us both, Pickett. Because I know, too. Are you gonna believe him or me? Son, I still need you to help me with the store. From now on, we can be full partners. Like he says, maybe you will be his partner. But you know better than anybody what happens to his partner. Both of you shut up now. I, I, I gotta think about this. Come back to Tombstone, see for yourself. Pickett, if you go back to Tombstone with Hollister, you're going to hang. We're going to Johnsonville. The afternoon of November 8th. Sheriff Hollister, Pickett, and Dempsey rode the trail to Johnsonville. All the guns still in the hands of Pickett. That 
it's Apache Pass. We'd be better off to head north and then cut back to Red Rock. Now, I gotta get to Johnsonville. I promised somebody. Now, you lead on. Stop for go on. I think you're gonna have to decide whether to trust the Indians or me. And how do you know there's Indians around here? I don't. But if there are, I'll be more help with a gun. So will I. And supposing there ain't no Indians. And either way, you keep your scalp. You see, I need you back in Tombstone alive, just like you need me to help fight Apaches. If there are any. No. <clears throat> we go on just like before. Get going. Like you suspect anything, but that body's probably a patchy bait. We're too far into the pass to back out now. We better look like we've taken the bait. All right, the fun's over. Give me the guns. Give them to me. Give Dempsey his. Give it to him, but keep an eye on him. We're gonna gallop in there just like they expect us to. And follow my lead. Let's go. Thank you. 
trust, Dempsey. It's not going to be that easy, Sheriff. You better drop that gun. You get a fair trial, but this way, you haven't got a chance. You haven't got a chance. It's two against one. That dead man down there is Ralph Dade. One against one. No. Now, Pickett's with me. Between us, we can gun you. Then we'll both be free. Mr. Dempsey? Did you say I killed your partner? No, sir, no, of course not. We both know I did it. There's one way to find out for sure. Come back to Tombstone. If he moves that gun, you let him have it. Killing's not that easy, Dempsey. Not for most people. It leaves a heavy mark like it has on you. A lawman hates it most of all. It's part of his job, he does it. But he never forgets it. Pickett, tell the sheriff you were with me. I don't think so, Dempsey. If you shoot, you shoot alone. I'm betting the boy's not a killer. I know you are. I'm putting you under arrest now. Drop that gun or use it. All right, Pickett, let's go. What's up, Clay? Well, I'm glad you could make it. Take him on back. That pick it? Yeah. He's not a bad looking boy. Well, I better get this over to the funeral parlor. Who's that? Dempsey. Pickett killed him, too? No, I killed him. He was trying to resist arrest for the murder of his partner. Dempsey? Never even occurred to me. No wonder he was so anxious to see Pickett dead. Hmm. Wouldn't it be ironic? How's that? They buried Dempsey next to his partner on Boot Hill. Arizona Territory, June 6, 1882. The West spawned many different types of men, and one of the most dangerous was Whit Purcell. Well, you're going to be as flashy as an Eastern dude. A successful newspaper man should dress the part. Well, the hat's all right, but uh, Paris, this coat. <laughs> Vulture just rode into town. Him? Mm -hmm. You joking? That's about the mildest looking man I've ever seen. He's not even wearing a gun. Whit Purcell does his killing without one. What you might call a killer's agent. He makes his living by arranging for murders. What do you mean? Well, let's suppose a man has an enemy. Instead of handling it himself, he sends for Purcell. And then what? For a thousand dollars, Purcell agrees to handle it. And then he sends for his partner, Stu Regan. Regan locates his victim, baits him into a fight, and guns him down. 
and he and Purcell collect the money and move on. Nice business. Yeah, and they make a fine combination. Regan's short on brains, but he's fast with a gun. Purcell can't shoot for sour apples, but he thinks quick. And someone here in Tombstone must be marked for murder. Wonder who? And if he knows it. An actual account from the pages of my newspaper, the Tombstone Epitaph. This is the way it happened, in the town too tough to die. Tombstone Territory. <laughs> Bartender, set up another round of drinks for the game. You uh, figure on being in town long, Mr. Purcell? Well, that, that all depends on how much time it takes me to finish my business. Here we go. Oh, afternoon, Sheriff. Would you care to join us in a friendly drink? I don't feel very friendly. Oh, now, that's no way to talk, Clay. Mr. Purcell's a visitor in our town. A very temporary visitor. Now, finish your drink and get out. Well, Sheriff, what... You can drop the act, Purcell. I've seen you operate before in Dodge City. This is one town that you're not going to get away with murder. Well, I think that's out of line, Clay. When you start letting me run your bank, Eli, then I'll let you tell me how to handle my job. Well, Sheriff, the way you're acting, somebody might think I'm a dangerous character. Oh? What would you call a killer? Well, now, that's very strong talk. Why, I don't even carry a weapon. Un unless you count um, this. Let me give you some advice, Mr. Purcell. Get on your horse and get out now, while you still can. I'll get out, Mr. Hollister, when I finish my business. Not before. He's right, Clay. There are no keep-out signs posted at the city limits. You can't run a man out of town unless he's done something wrong. Yeah. Yeah, that does make it harder. The sheriff seems to have gotten out of the wrong side of the bed this morning. Let's drink to his recovery, huh? <laughs> Couldn't scare Purcell out of town. Nope. I didn't figure it'd work, but it was worth a try. Well, what are you going to do now? I don't know. For the first time since I put on this badge, I feel kind of helpless. There ought to be some way. I, I can't do anything until they make a move. By that time, it'll probably be too late. If you only knew who they had in mind, you could at least warn him. Yeah, that's part of the battle. But I got to find out who hired him. Well, you've got your problems. Hmm. And I've got mine. Getting out a newspaper. Just leave room for an obituary. In Tombstone, I always do. Excuse me. My fault, Mr. Ramsey. You got a heavy load there. Haven't seen you in town lately. Been busy out the ranch. Any news? I can use the epitaph on your way? No. No, nothing going on. I'll let you know if anything happens. Thanks, I'd appreciate it. Thank <laughs> you. 
Hello, Tom. Thought I'd stop by and see if I could get anything for the epitaph. Pardon me. Um, uh, you're Harris Clyburn of the epitaph, aren't you? That's right. Well, you're just the man who can help me out. I suppose you've heard about my run-in with the sheriff this morning. Oh, there's been some talk. Well, that's what I was afraid of. I I'd like to call on your good offices, if I may. Bartender, would you give me the oh. oh, what's the matter with you, mister? You just spilled it. Well, I, I, I'll give him another drink, will you? I'm awfully sorry. I just don't understand people like you. Oh, what'd you do that for? I apologized. You know, for a little man, you got a mighty big mouth. From now on, keep it shut. Why, oh, you stupid lummox. You want trouble? I said put a halter on that lip. Leave him alone. You keep out of this. I don't like to see anybody pushed around. Looks to me like you're trying to make his business yours, mister. I'm not looking for any trouble. I'm not running from it either. Oh, now, now, forget it, forget it, Mr. Clyburn. No, no reason for you to get mixed up in this. He started this. Maybe he'd like to finish it. I sure would. I'm not armed. Don't trouble yourself none about that, mister. I carry an extra. Now you have a gun. Use it. Well, go on. Move your hand a little closer to it. I'm not going to draw yet. Well, go ahead. I'm waiting. Paris! There's not going to be any shooting unless you want to take me on. That fellow started. I know how it started, Mr. Purcell. It's my gun. Well, you ought to be more careful what you do with it. What do you mean? You know, you've heard of cases where men were shot with their own guns? Oh, well, that wouldn't have happened. Maybe not. Thanks. Oh, you handled that very nicely, Sheriff. Let's get out of here. Oh, Mr. Clyburn, I'm sorry that we didn't get a chance to have our talk. Some other time. Well, I'll be looking forward to it. Remind me to stay out of saloons. You act like what I told you is a joke. Now, will you stay away from Purcell? Well, you act like it was my fault. I was standing there. He came up to talk to me. I figured I'd let him talk. Now, and a couple of seconds later, that skinny gunhawk showed up. Is that right? Yeah. It all started over practically nothing. Uh -uh. That's where you're wrong. That whole fight was planned out of the last detail. About two seconds more, and you'd have been nothing but an obituary notice in your own newspaper. That fellow you had the run-in with? That's Stu Regan. Stu Regan? Yeah. We know he's in town to kill somebody. Well, he almost accomplished his purpose. Me? Well, he's not going to waste time picking fights with strangers unless he's hired to. Me? Well, why? Well, let's find out. <laughs> First thing I'm going to do is assign Fred here to stick as close to you as possible. You really think I need him, Clay? 
Well, after what almost happened in the Oriental, yes. Remember, Harris, a thousand dollars is a lot of money. For a man like Regan, killing's an easy way to earn it. Purcell <sighs> really made me take the bait, didn't he? Yeah. A little man with a smile on his face and murder in his heart. There ought to be some way to stop those two. I'm rather personally interested now. Until an actual attempt is made on your life, there's nothing I can do. Well, that's just dandy. At least you know it's you they're out to get. Most of Regan's victims don't even have that privilege. I don't feel so honored. Harris, can you think of anybody that might want to kill you? A newspaper editor makes lots of enemies. It looks like you made one real good one. Well, come on, bird dog. Where are you going? Back to the office. I've got a newspaper to get out. I guess I'll tag along with two of you. Clay, one bodyguard at a time's enough. Yeah? So, you know, it's a real nice jacket. Sure hate to see him get buried in it, wouldn't you, Fred? All right, let's go. Well, hello, Hollister. How is the fair city of Tombstone? Quiet, I hope. It has been lately. Now that you and Regan are in town, I'm looking for change. Oh, you've got Stu and me all wrong. Oh? You know, sooner or later, you're going to make a mistake. I'll wait. Well, good for you. Nice talking to you, Hollister. There's any mail for you, but I'll... Uh, no, I, uh, I want some information. Glad to be of help. A couple of minutes ago, a little fat fella, always smiling, picked up a letter. I want to know who sent it and from where. Wish I could tell you, Clay. Look, Will, this could be important. It could help to save a man's life. You do know who sent it, don't you? Matter of fact, I do. It was mailed right here at the post office this morning. This is confidential, remember? After all, he put a stamp on it, makes it official mail. Will you trust me, Will? Martin Ramsey left it. It was addressed to a man named uh, Whit Purcell, the little fat man you spoke of. Uh, Ramsey told me he'd be by to pick it up. Oh, thanks, Will. Uh, <clears throat> confidential, remember? A postal clerk is sort of like a doctor about these things. Well, Doc, let's hope you just saved a life. There must be some mistake. The letter was sent by Ramsey and picked up by Purcell. The connection's obvious. I hardly know Ramsey. I haven't spoken to Ramsey three times in my life. Now, why would he want me killed? What do you know about him? Not too much. He bought the Salter Ranch. He's a quiet man, keeps to himself. Doing very well, uh, so I've heard. Well, think back. Maybe you can place him. Clay, like I said before, a newspaper editor makes a great many enemies. Yeah. Maybe somebody you exposed in the newspaper and sent to jail. A man he had a fight with. Sent to jail. Martin Connors, he was a lawyer. I helped send him to prison for embezzlement when I was working on a paper in St. Louis. It couldn't be. Connors didn't look a thing like Ramsey. Well, how long ago was that? A little over ten years, I guess. Well, ten years in a prison term can change a man considerably. Well, without his beard, younger, maybe twenty pounds lighter, it's possible. Well, Martin Ramsey or Martin Connors doesn't make much difference. The important thing is we know who hired Regan and Purcell. Well, frankly, I don't feel much better off. I've still got a loaded gun at my head. I wonder how this would look on me. Well, this is a fine time to be talking about haberdashery. You know what they say, clothes make the man. 
Hey, that's pretty good. I think I'll order one from Chicago. Look, if it'll get your mind back to the problem, you can have a hat. You can have a coat, too, if it's any help. Well, thanks. I think I will. They are about the same size in the chest. The sleeves are a little short, though. How's it look? Like a newspaper editor who's about to be shot. Good. Let's hope that Regan thinks the same way. Oh, now, wait, Clay. I don't want you taking my bullet. Harris, I don't want either one of us to take a bullet. But shooting's my job. Yours is right in obituaries, remember? Here's what I want you and Fred to do. Will you stop worrying? Regan knows his business. <laughs> There's no substitute for experience. There he is now. I guess you owe us a thousand dollars, Mr. Ramsey. Evening, Mr. Ramsey. Happened to be in the neighborhood, so Fred and I thought we'd drop in on you for a while. Well, Mr. Purcell, this is a surprise. Nice seeing you again. And. Um, Maybe we can finish up that talk we were going to have. Oh, a lot of things are going to be finished up before this night's over. It never occurred to me before, Mr. Ramsey, but uh, you look a great deal like a man I used to know in uh, St. Louis. A fellow by the name of Connors. Oh? I don't think I ever heard of him. I didn't think you had. Well, uh, gentlemen, if you'll excuse me, I have an appointment in town. Uh, sit down, Mr. Purcell. And you too, Ramsey. Sit down. We uh, have some more company coming. I think we should all be here to greet them. the dark can be dangerous. Didn't anybody ever tell you that? 
Scared? You should be. Because we're finishing up what we started in the bar. I see your arm this time. Make your move. This time you have the privilege. Now earn your money. You didn't earn it. Hollister. Mm -hmm. Yeah, looks like you'll live a long time. She won't need this in prison. Well, let's get that shoulder doctored up. You and I are going visiting. Conspiracy to commit murder. Well, it takes, it takes proof to convict a man, Sheriff. I don't think you have any. Oh? Well, some men just don't like to sit in prison alone. Regan did a lot of talking. Brad? Oh. All right, Ramsey, you too. You are Martin Connors, aren't you? Why did you want to have me killed? Well, I was afraid you'd recognize me. As far as I'm concerned, you'd paid for your crime. You went to prison. I had no reason to expose you. You mean you didn't know I'd escaped? We do now. Let's go. Tombstone, Arizona Territory, August 12, 1881. Tombstone, 20-minute layover. I'm not paying forward, but I'd be pleased to help you with your luggage. Oh, thank you, but I'm expecting my husband to meet me. Town, isn't it? Oh, uh, I'm sorry, Captain. Here's oh, your case. Thank you. Enoch, what happened? Somebody tried to rob me. You're hurt. Oh, it's nothing, Amy. Oh, come on inside, Enoch. We'll get a doctor. An actual account from the pages of my newspaper, the Tombstone Epitaph. This is the way it happened, in the town too tough to die. Tombstone Territory. Tombstone was only mildly disturbed when an unidentified stranger attempted to rob the Mayfair store. In the West's fastest growing boom town, incidents of this kind were so common they attracted little notice. Oh, Clay. Anything interesting over at Benson? No, I delivered my prisoner. How's it been around here? Oh, real quiet day. Well, I heard there was some shooting. Oh, somebody tried to rob Enoch Ward's store this morning. Ward put the run on him. Nobody gets killed, so it's a quiet day. Well, it was loud for a while. 
Ward was in here raising Cain about lawlessness, and why didn't you do something about it? Oh, yeah, that sounds familiar. There was also an army officer here looking for you. Had a dispatch case to deliver to another officer from Fort Huachuca. Where is he now? I said something about going down to the barber shop for a bath. Hmm. Incidentally, I put the dispatch case in your safe. Well, how'd you get it open? Never reveal professional secrets. Just in case you don't remember, you gave me the combination to use in case of emergency, remember? sure nobody else finds out about this, will you? It was sent to you. And Harris said it was a quiet day. Mr. Hollister? I'm Lieutenant Lowry, Fort Huachuca. I'm going to meet a Captain Emerson here. Oh, yes, I got the message from the fort. I'm afraid I'm a little late. My horse went lame. Has the captain arrived yet? Mm, about an hour ago on the stage. In a dispatch case? It's in my safe. May I see the dispatch case? Well, certainly. May I see your orders and identification? Of course. Thank you. Thank you. No offense, Lieutenant. Certainly not. Here you are. Well, this key doesn't fit. This is a different case. Try it again. Uh, Mr. Hollister, do you have something I can use to open this with? Oh, sure. Very efficient. Hollister, I wonder if you'd do me a favor. Would you try to find Captain Emerson? I'll stay here with this until you get back. All right. You see what's in the case, don't you, Captain? It looks like old newspaper to me, Lieutenant. Does the Captain know what was in it originally? I merely had my orders to deliver the case, Lieutenant, exactly as you had your orders to receive the case. You'll pardon me, sir. It seems strange they didn't let you know you were carrying $30,000. $30,000? Consigned to the paymaster at Fort Huachuca. I had no knowledge of this, Lieutenant. Are you sure, sir? You doubt my word, Lieutenant? How many other people were on that stage beside you? Two. Do you know who they were? And Mrs. Ward and... Uh... A man named uh, Cahoon. Cahoon? The name means something to you, Lieutenant? I've seen him around Tucson. A gambler, kind of a ladies' man. Could he have known about that shipment, Clay? Well, it's possible. Seems like everybody knew about this but me. Does the captain mind repeating exactly what happened on the stage? We got into Tombstone, and there was shooting on the street. Mr. Cahoon got up to sea, stumbled and uh, fell into me, then got out and ran across the street. Then I followed him to the sheriff's office to meet you, Lieutenant. And you were late. Oh, well, that's right. I was here. I put the dispatch case in the safe myself. 
Well, surely you gentlemen don't think I stole the money. Sir, $30,000 is an awful lot of money, especially for a man who's over age and grade and planning on retirement. It's true, Lieutenant. I was thinking of retirement after this tour of duty. I was planning on getting a ranch of my own. I request that you hold the captain in custody, Mr. Hollister, until I can get further orders from the fort. Sorry, sir. You realize, of course, Sheriff, that you have no jurisdiction over Army personnel. However, in the interest of seeing this matter cleared up, I intend to cooperate fully. Thank you, sir. He did it, Clay? I don't know, but if he did, he's going to spend a lot more time in the Army without pay. So listen, I'll be back. Why don't you hang around? Yeah, nothing else to do. If I'm not here when you return, I'll be in my office, mm -hmm. along with the combination to your safe. you do with him? What did I do with who? The captain. Lieutenant Laura just came in to telegraph the fort. Well, I put him in jail. He didn't do it. And just how do you know that he didn't do it? Mm, woman's intuition. I wish you'd use a little more of that woman's intuition and tell me who did. I'm thinking on it. Ellen? What do you know about Amy Ward? She likes good clothes. She'd like to be the queen bee of the town, except they can't afford it. Her husband's older than she is, and he's jealous, if that's of any interest to you. What else would you like to know? Well, that'll do for now. When you finish it, let me know how it comes out. I already know. I read the last chapter first. Howdy, Clay. Oh, Ace. Yeah. So you drove that stage in from Tucson this morning, didn't you? That's right. Well, you know Amy Ward? Yeah, she's a nice-looking woman. She rode in with me today. Well, how much baggage did she have? Now, that's funny that you'd mention that. I thought it was kind of peculiar at the time. Uh, making that trip there and back with just a hat box. Don't seem to make sense, does it? Well, I guess it depends on why she made the trip. Well, now, Clay, you rode those coaches. And you know that people don't ride them just for the pleasure. Yeah, I guess you're right. Thanks, Ace. Mr. Ward? Afternoon. Oh, good afternoon, Mr. Hollister. Something in the uh, crepe de chine? Oh, not, not today, thank you, Ms. Ward. Well, maybe you're in the wrong department. Yes, yeah, could be that. Well, if you will tell me what you want, I'll be very happy to help you. You were on that Tucson stage this morning. Amy, time to close up. I understand you had a little bit of trouble. You're a little late with your investigation, aren't you, Sheriff? Yes, ma'am. And why don't you go out and catch the one who did it and stop bothering us? That wasn't what Mr. Hollister wanted, Enoch. Well, what does he want, then? I'm not really sure. You wanted to know whether I was on the Tucson stage this morning? I was. What is all this nonsense? Please, Enoch, if we can be of any help. Would you mind telling me why you went to Tucson? To do some shopping. I, uh, I bought a hat. How many other people were on the stage? Oh, come along, Amy. Uh, just a moment, Enoch. There were two other passengers besides myself. A uh, Mr. Cahoon and a cavalry captain. And nobody else got on or off? No. 
Was the captain carrying a dispatch case? I uh, didn't notice. Look here, why are you bothering my wife with all these questions? Because $30,000 was lifted from that stage. Army payroll. How terrible. Yes, Captain thought so. What has all this got to do with Mrs. Ward? She was on the stage. I think you'd better leave, Hollister. If you have no specific charge to bring against my wife, get out. Mr. Ward, there's no reason getting yourself all upset. Or do you have a reason? If you think I'm going to stand idly by while you accuse my wife of thievery... I'm not accusing anybody. Incidentally, I'd be, uh, I'd be careful of that. It could be dangerous if you don't know how to use it. It might surprise you to know that I'm considered an expert marksman. Hmm. Well, no, that doesn't surprise me at all. A man might have to shoot real good. Miss a big close-up target five times. That man that tried to rob your store. <laughs> like that one, Mr. Hollister? Oh, well, no thank you, ma'am. But I was thinking of buying a hat for a friend of mine, a birthday present. Well, what type of hat did you want? Oh, well, I, I don't know. I never bought a hat before. But uh, I always have admired Mrs. Amy Ward's taste. What kind of a hat would she buy? Just a minute. Mrs. Ward bought this exact hat just two days ago. Isn't it stunning? Well, ma'am, personally, if I were a woman, I'd be afraid to wear this hat. Yes, some bird hunter might try to shoot me on the rise. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. I, uh, I think I'd better get her handkerchief instead. Uh, but thank you for your help. Sheriff Hollister paid a visit to King Cahoon, ill-tempered gambler gunman. Cahoon? You seem to have the advantage, you... Know my name. I don't know yours, and you're standing behind me. I haven't got a gun on you, if that's what you mean, and the name's Clay Hollister. What do you want? I'd like to have a little talk with you. What about? I'd just like to say hello to Tombstone's new citizen. I've got no business with you, Sheriff. Mr. Cahoon. You can make it hard on both of us, or you can make it easy on yourself. Leave me alone, Sheriff. I don't like lawmen, and I don't like being pushed around. You haven't been pushed around yet, but you keep working at it, and you'll make it. I've done nothing. I'm a law-abiding citizen. Is that why you got kicked out of Tucson? I said you could make it easy on yourself. I like it the hard way. All right. That's just the way you'll get it. Well, here it is. Now, would you mind telling me why you wanted it? Out of curiosity. Captain? Orders for release? No, sir, not yet. This way, please. Now, Captain, was the hat box Mrs. Ward was carrying anything like this one? It might have been a different color, but they're all the same. Mm -hmm. And the dispatch case you were carrying, are you sure it was this size? I couldn't tell them apart, could I? Now you know why I wanted the hat box. Captain, you can go back to your cell. I've got an idea you won't be there too long. The 
evening of August 12, 1881. Tombstone heard gunfire for the second time that day. Was Lieutenant Lowry hurt badly? No, no, the doctor says he'll be up in around three, four days. I don't think that shot was intended for Lowry. You've been reading my mind. You got any idea who's trying to kill you? Yeah, yeah, several. If you want to give me some names, I can get, start setting a type. Well, that's what I wanted to see you about. I'd, uh, I'd appreciate it if you wouldn't print anything for a day or two. Any way you want it, Clay. Thanks. Getting awfully late. This won't take very long. Well, if you've come to talk to my husband, Mr. Hollister, he's not at home. He's in Benson on a business matter. No, I don't want to talk to Mr. Ward. I want to talk to you. Thank you. You're leaving town. A visit to my sister in St. Louis. Oh, isn't Mr. Ward going with you? Well, he might join me later if we sell the store. Yes, I'd heard that business wasn't too good. I'm sure you didn't come here to talk about that. Well, there might be some connection. I uh, suppose it's about the money that was stolen from the stage. Yes, partly. Well, I should think you'd leave that matter to the military authorities. It's gone beyond that now. See, somebody tried to kill me a little while ago. How awful. Yes. And you think there's some connection between the two? There could be. That's rather far-fetched, isn't it? After all, a man in your position must have enemies. I can think of several. Seems that I might have made a new one. One more shouldn't matter. Now, are you quite through talking, Mr. Hollister? I haven't had a chance to get started yet. Seems to me if you'd spend more time running down criminals instead of uh, annoying, decent citizens, we all might benefit a little bit. Now, what about the man who tried to rob my husband? Oh, I already know who that was. Yes, I'm pretty sure that that was just a man who was hired to create a diversion when the stage pulled in. Have you arrested him? Not yet, but I will. Now, getting back to the robbery. I'm afraid I've told you everything I have to you say. You you went to Tucson on a shopping trip? Uh, yes. How long were you gone? Oh, just up and back. It doesn't and take very long to look in all the shops. And you didn't know the captain or Mr. Cahoon before that? Of course not. Do you remember, Mrs. Ward, if the captain got off the stage? Uh, I'm afraid I don't. I heard the shots, I looked out and saw Enoch, and the next thing I knew, I was running. It doesn't seem reasonable that a passerby just happened to steal a captain's dispatch case. Well, wouldn't that mean that the captain was the logical suspect? He is. He's in jail. Well, then I would think you would consider the case closed. I would. Except I just don't think he did it. You see, there's one thing I am certain about. Captain couldn't have taken a shot at me. I'm sorry to have disturbed you. A new hat? Yes, it was the one thing I was able to buy in Tucson. In Tucson? Yes. Do you mind if I have a look at it? Of course not. Thank you. Pretty, isn't it? Yes, very. Well, are you satisfied, Mr. Hollister? Yes. You see, I know you've got that hat here in town. When you left Tucson, that case was empty. Where's the money, Mrs. Ward? Curiosity can be a dangerous thing, Mr. Hollister. Get his gun, King. I knew I should have thrown you out of town this afternoon. Over against the wall. 
haven't finished packing, Amy. I have a carriage waiting. I wouldn't want to disturb the neighbors. Amy, what are you doing here? I thought you were in Benson. I changed my mind. What's going on here, Amy? It's pretty plain, isn't it? They're running out on you. Don't listen to him, Amy. We were going to pick you up in Benson. I don't believe you, Amy. You're the one who thought up this trip. No, no. Now I know why you spent all that time in Tucson. All right. What about it? Only this. Wait for me, King! Sheriff! I told you not to push me too far. Captain, you have yourself to thank. You see, we all believed in you. You might give my regards to Mr. and Mrs. Ward. Oh, well, I, uh, I rarely get up to Yuma Prison on visiting days. I guess I can hardly blame the Army for not telling me about the money. I'm afraid they've always thought of me as a book officer. They weren't sure how I'd stand up under fire. You stood up real good. Are you still going to resign, start that ranch? Yes, sir. Chickens? Horses. I'm going to sell them to the army. Well, Ward's had it planned very well. Yeah. Enoch's starting to shoot just when that stage arrived. Mm-hmm. They would have gotten away with it, too, if Mrs. Ward hadn't have bought that hat. Well, looks like another unexciting day. Mm. Harris, will you do me a favor? Never say that again. A road near Tombstone, Arizona Territory, September 16, 1889. Wally Joby and Chick Umber, professional killers. Hired by the Hammond faction of the Tanner Hammond Land and Cattle Feud, a bloody range war spreading throughout the territory. So far, 23 men had died. Every road outside Tombstone was a potential death trap. Hey, Joe. Look. Well, now, ain't that Fred Tanner's kid? Yeah. Well, what about that talk about the range war stopping and all us going free? Don't you fret none, Chick. We're still getting paid, and as far as we're concerned, the war's still on. Like a setting duck. Another 50 bucks. Stone Territory. An actual account from the pages of my newspaper, the Tombstone Epitaph. This is the way it happened. In the town too tough to die. Pushing out luck right and right into Tombstone. You know something about yourself, Chick? You're a warrior.
Sheriff Hollister? Yeah. From General Claybank. He said it was urgent. Thank you. The amnesty. By authorization from Washington, the governor of the territory of Arizona orders all involved principals to immediately lay down their arms and take oaths to keep the peace. Anyone breaking the amnesty will be summarily court-martialed and executed. Otherwise, all participants are fully pardoned. Does that mean Joby and Umber? Why, they've killed seven men. That's what it means, Wayne. It's like the armistice at the end of any war. After a couple of years of fighting, the issues get confused, and there's right and wrong on both sides. So a full pardon is the only practical solution. It's got to end somewhere. Begging your pardon, sir, but I saw those two gunmen you mentioned, Joby and Umber, some out on the trail riding in, only a couple of miles out of town. Well, thank you very much, but uh, they're not wanted men anymore. Unless they break this amnesty, I can't touch them. Fred Tanner's in town buying supplies. I'll administer the oath to him. You ride out to Hammond's place and make sure that he understands all of the conditions, and then swear him in. That'll end it. Fred. Still chasing Hammond's hired gunman? Or have you quit trying? I wouldn't say that. Fifty dollars a man, Josh Hammond pays them. And you haven't even touched them. They're murderers, cold-blooded murderers. There was a lot of blood spilled on both sides, Fred. Besides, I need proof to arrest anybody. And I'm not looking for them anymore. Neither are you. The amnesty's come through. It's all over. I'd be glad. Except for that Joby and that Umber. Yeah. Yeah, I know what you mean. Come on over to my office. I'll give you the oath. Wayne's out getting hammers now. All right, Clay. You know, you know the real reason I'm glad it's finished? After three years of shooting and killing, it's not so much the land anymore, nor what this sort of thing has done to me. It's what it might do to my son. Les was 14 when it started. He's 17 now and figures he's big enough to help out with a gun. Or be killed by one. Special business for you. Well, this is one notice I'll be happy to print. Free. Post one of them, I'll take care of the rest. All right. Thanks. Well, we should do it. Because we should come about 15 lives sooner. You're the 
newspaper man? That's right. I sure hope the rest of the people in this town know how to read. Ain't that right, Shake? Oh, we ain't about to break the amnesty. Only it don't say nothing about uh, self-defense. In case somebody else starts something. Well, hello, Sheriff. Sure nice to meet you after all this time. Hey, a nice chick. Oh, sure is. Listen carefully, Joby. As far as I'm concerned, you and your partner are nothing but murderers, amnesty or no. But I'm not going to run you out of town, because I want you here. I want you real close. And if you so much as wiggle a trigger finger, I'm going to haul you in. Sheriff, we ain't going to wiggle nothing. Unless somebody else wiggles first. So in case you want us, we'll be over at the Oriental Saloon celebrating our new standing in the community. <laughs> They're going to make it a bit of pill to swallow, aren't they? Yeah, they're going to try. Hello, Ellen. Hi. Anything come in on those telegrams you sent out? Yes. No one seems to have anything definite on them. No, just a chance. I was hoping I could turn up something. Wally Joby, known member of the Wild Bunch, suspected bank robber, no proof or warrant, Provo, Utah. Wally Joby and Chick Umber questioned killings during Santa Fe Sheep and Cattle War last year. No proof. And, uh, and the same thing, Pecos, Texas. There's not a warrant in the bunch. They played it pretty smooth. I still can't touch them. Can't touch them? What are you talking about? Oh, forgot you hadn't heard. Here. Thanks, Ellen. Even know who did it. Somebody ambushed him. Who do you think did it? I wanted you to know, Clay. I wanted you to know why I'm going to find Joby and Umber and kill him myself. Look, Fred, I've known you a long time. I know how you feel. But you can't break the amnesty. Otherwise, I'll have to arrest you. The court might hang you. You mean you'd stand for them against me? I mean, I've got to enforce the law no matter how I feel. Besides, you don't know that Joby and Umber did it. I'll ask him to make sure. Just before I kill him, I'll ask him. Hey, Mr. Tanner. Sure. Mr. Tanner, we sure are sorry about the kid. How did you know? Well, nobody told us about the amnesty, and when the boy come along with... We... No. No, Fred. I'll be back. Next time, things will be different. I'll bring enough men to do it my way. Sheriff, we want to thank you. You know, we don't want nobody breaking that there amnesty. I don't do anything foolish. Sheriff, just got a little excited, that's all. We got nothing to worry about. Not with the law protecting us the way it does. Joby! Something for you to remember. There's one man the amnesty doesn't include. Uh, who? Me. The afternoon of September 16, 1889. A day Sheriff Clay Hollister stood alone to uphold the laws he was sworn to enforce. <laughs> there you are, Bartender. 
bartender. That ought to cover it. And that ought to cover another bottle. Let it never be said that we're breaking the law. <laughs> right. Right. <coughs> I feel like a little poker, Chick. How about you? Sure. What about Tanner? He ain't gonna bother us none. You saw what the sheriff did. Next time he'll use his gun if he has to. Bring the bottle. You two gentlemen would like us to join you, wouldn't you? Yeah, wouldn't you? It's mighty obliging of you. Let's see here. 10, 20, 40. 50. Seems like all our money comes in $50 batches nowadays. 350, 400, 450, 500. Well, that's it, Clay. $500 reward to the man who kills Wally Joby and Chickumber, donated by the citizens of Tombstone. What do they want from me? They elected me to this office to uphold the law, and now they offer a reward to go out and break the law. Well, they feel pretty strongly about well, it. Well, you know how I feel about it. Yeah. So do they. That's why they gave me the money instead of you. You can just give it back to them. An amnesty is a truce to stop wanton killings a searing medicine to clean the gaping wounds of war, but which can leave little sores of infection to fester and spread. Toby. Hello, Sheriff. I want you a number out of town now. Well, 30 minutes ago, you were telling us we had to stay. Well, I changed my mind. Well, you have. Well, we ain't. I said now. Try it. Now, Sheriff, we ain't gonna start anything. You want us to leave, we leave. I guess you're ace high. First town I ever saw where a single and ace beat two of a kind. How much time we got? I sure would like a drink first. 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. Clay? Harris said you probably were here. I... Outside. Well, there's trouble, Clay. At the post office, I overheard them. Most of the merchants, Maddox, Wilson, Richardson, they plan to join Fred Tanner when he comes back. What are you going to do? Well, there's not much I can do except get them out of town. Two killers going free to kill again. If there was only some way we could get them to break the amnesty. They're not about to. I've thought about it. How to force them or even trick them out into the open. I guess it would take something pretty extra special. Yeah. Yeah, they're hiding behind that amnesty and they're not... Extra special. Extra special, that's it. Where's Harris? He's in his office, I think. Thanks. I... Uh, but... I haven't completed a conversation with you all day. Harris. I know how I can do it. I can force Joby and Umber out into the open, up from under the protection of the amnesty, but I need your help. Well, sure, Clay. What do you want me to... Front page of the epitaph. Is it all set up? Yeah. Well, can you change it? Change it? Yeah. Here's a headline for a front page story I need fast. Well, you don't think anything of ruining three hours' work, do you? It's for a very special extra edition of the paper. Just one copy, in fact. I know who you are. 
If you're smart, you'll ride out of Tombstone. Uh, Fred Tanner's on his way here with his men. And Clay, the sheriff, won't be able to stop them. And Funny, you know, that's just what we were thinking since we hear they got a small army. Of course, if you were to ride with us, nobody would do any shooting, would they? So I figure we'll just wait here till Tanner gets here, and then you and me and Chick will just sort of mosey out of town. Just in case they slip through, two of you take the east road. We'll meet you at the edge of town. Don't forget, I want those two. All right, let's go. At the request of Sheriff Clay Hollister, I rolled out a special edition. Amnesties restricted to members of Tanner Hammond families only. All hired killers and gunmen to pay for their crimes. 15 minutes. Quick work. I'll just make sure they see it pronto. Yeah, I'll be waiting for you. Here you go. And Harris, be careful. Hey, Chick, let's load the saloon, get us a couple of bottles. While we're waiting, we might as well get a little sociable. Seem like no time to be messing with drinking, Wally. You just quit thinking and get it. All right, all right. Humber. A sheriff's looking for you. Yeah, what fur? I mean, you haven't heard? Well, it's right here. They can't do this. They can't do this! We gotta get out of here. They changed the amnesty. Or it can't be this way. Something gone wrong. Hey, get back here, fool! Get away from that horse, Sheriff. I said, get away from that horse. Where's Joby? Telegraph office, I think. All right, Joby. Come on out. Now, don't to ask for it. Now, don't come any closer, Sheriff, or I'll kill her. Get away with this. Why not? Nobody's going to shoot you. mile out of town. I'll make it. You think Tanner's gonna let you go? You call Tanner off or I'm gonna kill her. 
You hurt her and I'll beat you to death. Joby. Whatever you have to do, I mean with me for breaking the amnesty. It's all right, Clay. I don't care now. When they shot at me, Fred, they lost their protection. In terms of the amnesty have been carried out. For those that broke it, they asked for it. Execution. Clay, I sort of hate to break up this front page. First time in my career I ever put out a one copy extra. You better save the paper. Someday it might be a collector's item. They were safe until they tried to shoot it out. You sure came up with an ace in the hole. What makes you say that? <laughs> I heard about it. Joby had it figured right at the Oriental. What do you mean? Wonder if he knew he was playing for such high stakes. He said this was the only town he'd ever been in where a singleton ace beats two of a kind. Tombstone, Arizona Territory. November 16, 1888. Mark Thompson, young troublemaker, had been sent packing from Tombstone by Sheriff Clay Hollister. Hi there. Uh, Ginger, I wasn't expecting to see you back this way so soon, Mark. I figured you were having a high old time in Tombstone. Ah, uh, things are kind of slow. Don't just sit there. Light down. I'm just about ready for chow. Got something to celebrate. Sure run into something today, boy. Yes, sir. I guess old Pecos will die rich after all. <laughs> account from the pages of my newspaper, the Tombstone Epitaph. This is the way it happened, in the town too tough to die. Tombstone Territory. Smith, left for dead by Mark Thompson, rode into Tombstone. Clay, a wounded man on a horse. You better have a look. All right. Hold it, hold it. It's Paco Smith. Yeah, and he's still alive. You, get the doc. Come on, help me get him over to my office. Easy, easy. That's the door, Jeff. Swing around. Take him, Clay. I got him. 
Easy now. You'll be all right, Pickus. You're going to be all right. I, I asked him to share child. Ask who? Ask who, Pickus? Mark Thompson. I thought he was wild, but... Well, it had to be robbery. I saw Pickus exchange 2,000 in gold for cash just the other day. You figure Thompson saw it, too? He must have. Back shooter. Pegas never hurt anybody. She is taken care of, Harris. You going without a posse? Mm -hmm. It's quicker that way. Clay, watch your back. November 18, 1888. Tracking Thompson was as easy as reading a map. Too easy, Clay sometimes thought, and he rode with a loose holster. November 20, Clay Hollister was still on the trail. It led to a town in the Chiricahua foothills. Some hopeful settler had called it paradise, and that's where Mark Thompson's trail led. to see you, son. You will all be right pleased, too. Yeah. You gonna stick around this time? You got any objections, Marshal? Still carrying a chip, huh? Minding my own business, if that's what you mean. Anything else on your mind? Nope. I've tried my best to be friends with you, Mark. You'll never be able to say that I didn't. Well, maybe you'll be glad to see your mom. I hope so. She's missed you, son. It ain't easy running that place alone. Well, I'm glad you realize that. I just knew it. Well, you're looking good, Mark. Oh, Mark, let me look at you. Six months. Oh, you're thin, Mark. You been eating regular? Oh, Ma, will you quit fussing me? If you'd wrote me you was coming, I'd have cooked something special for you. Yeah, well, I kind of made up my mind at the last minute. I bet the lazy Y lost their best hand when you decided to come home. Yeah. Well, I didn't figure it was right to stay away too long. Man's got to look after his folks. I'll rush it up something to eat. They run off two of my horses. Never saw a hide in her tail of them again. And you reported to the marshal? <laughs> you know better than that. Look, it's all right to be stiff-necked, Ma, but sometimes you've got to use people, even a lousy marshal. Oh. Your pa never used anyone. He wouldn't have liked it. Gee, things would sure be different around here if your pa had only lived and if you were only more like him. Ma, I myself 
I ain't Pa or anyone else. If you'd stay home, we could fix up the place and go on. Do you think they'd let us? Do you think anyone's gonna give John Thompson's family a break? Well, I don't know. Sometimes I think it's all in our heads. We remember so clear, and we think everyone else does, too. Nobody's forgotten how Pa and Uncle Fred were killed by the law. It's just no good here, I tell you. You know, if we were smart, we'd sell out. There's plenty of people who'd buy this place. We got the best water around here. No, son. Your pa's buried here, and I ain't deserting him. Ma, let's sell the place. Now, with the money you could get, and with what I've got here, well, we could start all over again. Where'd you get all that money? What difference does it make? You in trouble, son? Now, there you go again. Of course I'm not in trouble. There was a game in Tombstone. Everything came my way, that's all. Now, this is yours. I want you to take it. Where are you going? Ma, when are you going to realize I'm growing up? Now, I just came home. I want to go see the boys. Sure. I keep forgetting. I'm sorry. I'll be home early. Keep out of trouble, son. November 21, 1888. Fate was dealing a tricky hand. Sheriff Clay Hollister was less than an hour out of paradise. Well, I guess I better be getting back to the ranch. Now, you wait a minute. You've got to give us a chance to get square. Well, now, look, this is my first day home. Ma's expecting me. Well, your ma can wait, mister. He's got to go home and see mama. How do you like that? <laughs> Doggone mama's boy. Hey, look at that. I was just kidding, Marshal. It was just for laughs. Yeah, you could have died laughing. Now, there'd be no more trouble over this, you understand? The boy just had a little too much to drink. All right, Marshal, have it your way. But make sure he knows it, too. Give me a hand. We'll take him out back so we can sleep it off. Look like you've been riding, friend. Yeah, will you rub him dry and water him light? And if I'm not back in about an hour, give him half a flake of hay. Yes, sir, I sure will. I say, ain't you been here before? Sure, you're Clay Hollister from Tombstone, ain't you? Well, uh, what's up, Sheriff? Well, what I know, I'll tell you, okay? Uh-huh, big secret, eh? <laughs> well, whoever you're after, I hope you catch him. See, if you're looking for the marshal, you'll find him up the saloon. Big ruckus up there a little while ago. But don't worry about your horse. I'll, uh, I'll cool him off for you real Thank good. You. Thank you. Son of a gun. How you been? Why, well, couldn't be better. What brings you up this way? Well, much as I like your company, it isn't a social call. <laughs> well, that figures. Kind of looks like you've been traveling. Yeah, four or five days. Almost lost track of the time. Now, sit down, huh? You know anybody around here named Mark Thompson? Yeah. He was born and raised right down the road. Yet his family still live here? His mother. What's it all about? Murder. Murder? In Tombstone, a miner, he backshot him. Have you seen him around? Yeah, he got into a fight in here. I had to lay a pistol to his head, knock him out cold. He's out back, sleeping it off. Lead off. Uh, he must have seen me. I better get out to his place before he takes off for good. Now, don't go riding out there without knowing what you're getting into. Huh? That star, I'd be kind of careful calling on Frida Thompson. Why, that old gal's lab will shoot you before you can call out your name. You'd be dead, and she'd claim you were trespassing. Well, sounds as bad as her boy. No, not really. 
It's just that she hasn't got any use for the law. Ever since her husband and brother were gunned down. Oh? Uh -huh. There'd been a lot of rustling around here 10, maybe 15 years ago. The cattle were traced to the Thompson place. He and her brother decided to fight and both caught lead. Frida holds that the marshal needed a patsy and they were it. But the rustling stopped? Yes, it did. But she never believed it. And she's not going to believe anything against her darling Mark. She'll say he's being persecuted the way her husband was. You won't take him, Clay. Not if she shoots as straight as she used to. We both know what to do if a man opens fire, but... Well, how do you handle a woman like her? Maybe tell her the truth. There's only one side to a story if it's about Mark. His side. No one's going to make her believe any different. Oh, um... By the way, were you the marshal that had to kill her husband? Yeah. Well, maybe I better go out there alone. Walk real easy, Clay. She'll aim for your star. Mark! What are you doing? What's wrong? Mom, will you please leave me alone? You're not too old to answer my questions. You were going to sneak out. You weren't even going to say goodbye. Oh, it's just the same old story, Ma. Something goes wrong and they blame me for it on a kind of paw. There was a killing in Tombstone. Somebody told the sheriff who I was. That's all he needed. I was playing cards with the boys at the Paradise when he rode in. He's a killer. This Hollister, I know. I didn't want to sneak out on you, Ma, but I was afraid. Sure you were. When are they going to leave us alone? Look, remember that cave you used to hide in when you were a kid? No one will think of it. You go there, and if Hollister comes, I'll handle him. And you stay there till I give you the word. Thanks, Ma. I don't know what I'd do without you. up, Thompson. Make it easy on yourself. Whoever you are out there, you better get. That shot was just a warning. I told you to take off, mister. You're trespassing. You're not going to shoot me, Mrs. Thompson. Or you wouldn't have fired that warning shot. Every man's entitled to one warning. After that, he's on his own. Now, ride out, mister. My name's Sheriff Hollister, ma'am. I'm through talking, Sheriff. You're more of a man than your son, Mrs. Thompson. What do you mean? He never would have warned me. That's careless talk, Sheriff, with a gun on you. I've come to get him. He's wanted for robbery and murder. Mark told me all about it. You're just after him because of his father. Ma'am, I never heard about your husband until I rode into Paradise today. Mark backshot an old man for his money. The man lived long enough to tell me. You're lying. The Thompson never shot anybody in the back. No, ma'am, that's the truth. And I'm not leaving this part of the country without him. He's coming back to Tombstone with me and he'll get a fair trial. If you want to, you can come and see for yourself. Stay right where you are. All right, ma'am. I know he's not inside, or there wouldn't have been a warning. You don't think much of my son, do you? I held that old man in my arms while he died. He was shot through the back, and the last thing that he said was that Mark did it. Now, I'm going to get him. You Johnny Laws are all the same. You shoot first. Then if he's innocent, no one will ever know. You'll have buried your mistake. Look, Mrs. Thompson, I know that Mark isn't far away. Now, if you want to, you can take me to him. That way I'll get his chance in court. What do you say? I say you're too slick, mister. And I don't trust you. Now get out of here fast before I change my mind. Thank you. 
failing. Where did things go wrong? Clay Hollister was combing the Chiricahuas, trying to cut Mark Thompson's sign. He was sure the fugitive was hiding in these hills. About what? You gonna take me to him? Sure make it easier for all of us. Oh, I'm just looking for a stray calf. And a buggy with that rifle? Look, Mrs. Thompson, you gave me a warning. Now I'd like to return the favor. I know Mark's around here somewhere, and any interference on your part will make you an accessory. Well, you'll have to find him first, Sheriff. I will. Get your horse, son. You gotta ride. What? Hollis is on your trail. Come on, get your horse. Wait a minute. Well, this is just great, Ma. We couldn't ask for anything better. What do you mean? He'll never know what hit him. Mark! Mark! You can't push like a man. No warning, no nothing. It'll be murder. Look, a bullet kills you just as dead from the back as from the front. And it's a lot safer. But, Mark, your father wouldn't. My father. You know, I'm sick of hearing about him, what he'd do and what he wouldn't. Look, Pa's dead, and I'm alive. And I'm going to stay that way. But, Mark, you got to live with yourself, and you won't be able to if you do this. Won't I? It won't be the first time, Ma. Oh, Mark. I won't let you. I won't let you. I, let you. I can't let you. That's all my Mark. Let go. No, Mark. You gotta. It's the only way out for me. No, please, son. Give yourself up for me or I'll have to. Mark! <laughs> oh. 
he would have shot me. Yes, ma'am. What did I do wrong to make him be like this? Cliff? Sheriff? One for the road? No, thank you. We were just talking. Who's to blame? Kid goes wrong, it's so easy to blame the parents. I feel real sorry for Mrs. Thompson. Any chance of getting her to move away from this? No. She'll bury the boy next to his father and go right on working the place. You had to kill one of them. I had to kill the other. Some business we're in. Yeah, some business. Well, Clay, if you're ever in this neck of the woods, stop in again. Arizona Territory, September 12, 1881. There's something almost monotonous about a silver rush. Just about the time one wave of lucky prospectors begins to calm down, a new strike is made, and Tombstone is bursting at the seams again with new plutocrats making the most of it, and thugs and sharpies doing their best to separate them from their money. Nothing for Doc Cunningham to do here. No, oh, just the coroner. Getting too common to even make news for you anymore, innit? You still think it's one gang? Real pretty woman. And a real lady. I'm not so sure. About as being one gang, I mean. Whether it's one or a dozen, they always seem to know which miner has money in his belt, which stage it's worth holding up, how exactly I'm going to ship the bullion, and they know when I'm not going to be here. Tombstone Territory. Actual account from the pages of my newspaper, the Tombstone Epitaph. This is the way it happened. In the town too tough to die. Clay! Clay Hollister! Jack! Oh. Month the sunny since I laid eyes on you. Sure is. This is uh, Harris Clyburn, editor of the Epitaph. Who do Jack Oliver? <laughs> Lucky Jack Oliver. Don't want to mention figures, gents, but just twixt you and me in the lamppost, $40,000 in cold, hard cash. Well, I hope you haven't got it on you. Not so as it'll fall out of my pockets. <laughs> I've been carrying it around in my money belt. But nobody knows I've struck it rich, so I'm changing my style, gents. Get the idea? I hope not. Don't it say diamonds? I'm keeping my money on me. Look, Jack, don't ask for it. This sheriff has made you suspicious. After supper tonight, gents, I'm asking all my friends to meet me at Sam's. Watch me pick out my diamonds. Your friends, huh? Well, I guess we better be there. Free champagne. Well, see you tonight. <laughs> well, Lucky Jack, how do you like that one? Huh? Only $1,800. $1,800. $1, well, they're all here. Let's keep them coming, Sam. Yeah. I'll take uh, that one. How much? $4,200. $4,200. And, and somebody fill up this mug of mine. Boy, that's a beauty. Oh, that's a beauty. Oh, boy. How do you like that one? $1,800. $1,800. Pay hey, the man. Hey, Jack. Here's the cream and the bear cat of the lot. Just got it out of the safe. And only $10,000. $10,000? Ten thousand. Oh, boy. 
You must think I'm drunk. That's black. You gents ever hear of a black diamond? No. no. Yeah. Lady, is this real? That's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life. She must know. Huh? Yeah. Huh? Well. Uh, wait a minute, missus. Too bad she wouldn't stay for a little drink of champagne. Well, if the lady says so. <laughs> hey, the man. Yes, right, sir. Huh? Yeah. Now, everybody to the Tivoli Saloon. Yeah, yeah let's go. Yeah. Well, well, now, that is, if I can get down, I'll hey, come, come on. Come on. Come on. Right. You better leave these in Sam's safe. A man can spend 20000 in one night, and Clay Hollister thinks he ain't got sense enough to take care of his own diamonds. <laughs> <laughs> let's go. Oh, let's go. <laughs> well, they say there's a Providence that looks out for fools and drunks. Yeah. Well, just in case Providence is sitting down on the job, I'll have my deputies watch him, too. Lucky Jack Oliver, fourth stab victim in week. Well, I guess I need some new deputies. Lucky Jack, huh? Looks like striking a rich was the unluckiest thing that ever happened to him. A knife again. Lots of knives in Tombstone. Yeah. See you later, Clay. I'd like to take a look at your figures for me. Oh, if you will, please. I've grown to depend on you. Oh, here it is. A small mistake in addition. <laughs> well, I try. And thank you for advising me about the Tough Nut Mine shares. An excellent investment. I'm sure it's unnecessary to say that the information about their bullion production is quite confidential. Oh, Mr. Starr, of course. It's just that there's so many things going on around here. I know. I read about that poor Oliver man being stabbed and robbed of his diamonds. I wish I knew who took them. Well, I wish I could tell you. <laughs> Thank you. Do you have them with you? Bring them to my home. On the way out to her home, Mrs. Curtis was followed by one of Tombstone's undesirables, who in turn was followed by Sheriff Clay Hollister. Sure. This is a real good haul. Going into business for yourself, Eric? Where's the black diamond? I was looking at it. I just forgot to put it back. I always figured you were holding out. Now get out of here before I kill you. Look, Mrs. Curtis. When it 
comes to killing, you're talking to a man who knows how. Don't do it, Eric. You just had me kill now. So I have to kill you. You can have him. You can have anything. Break your arm. I thought he'd kill you. Tell me what happened, Mrs. Curtis. My husband gave me the gun before he died. I never thought I'd use it. Go on, tell me what happened. Well, he picked up my purse for me in town. And then he must have followed me out here. He broke in and... And then he tried to... Oh, Clay! Clay, I killed a man. I killed him. How could it happen? All right. I'll, uh, I'll get him to the undertaker. I'll be back later. Thank you, Clay. This keeps up. We'll have more people in Boot Hill than we got in town. Horseshoe setting. Well, according to Sam's list, that black diamond pendant is the only one still missing. Erickson could have dropped it when he murdered Oliver, or he could have hit it somewhere. Yep. Must have been a frightening experience for Mrs. Curtis. Yeah, but I'm still wondering. Wondering? About those diamonds, about that gentlewomanly little Derringer, and about why it was used. Mrs. Curtis? Lucky Oliver was right. The sheriffing has made you suspicious. Could be. Well, what are you going to do? Get to know a gentlewoman a little bit better? You know, I sure miss Erickson. But there's some satisfaction splitting three ways instead of four. <laughs> I still don't like one of an outfit killing another. Makes me uneasy. There's another thing I don't like. Look, Clay Hollister hanging around me is the best thing that's happened since Mr. Starr took a fatherly interest. When we take the tough nut mine Starr told you about, there's going to be a lot of silver bullion wanting to be moved. And I'll take my usual shopping trip to Tucson. Now, you boys better go, huh? Come in. Thank you. Oh, you look beautiful, Sarah. Well, thank you. You feel like answering a few questions now? I guess so. Well, as I said, I just returned home from Tombstone and... No, no, I mean about the diamonds. Do you have to have all the details? Some people have been killed because of those diamonds. Well, Clay, he... he offered me some of them. And then he attacked me with the knife. I'm glad you told me. So am I. Because I couldn't keep anything from you now. I never want to. Clay.
morning of September 15, 1881. The environs of Tombstone were rocked by an explosion at the office of the Tough Nut Mine. The loss was both human and monetary. Just how many people knew that the bullion was stored here for shipment? Some of our regular investors. All of them men? No, the principal of our local school, the widow of Reverend Caleb Smith, are among the ladies. Well, could I see the list, please? I'll have to go back to the bank. But they're all solid, respectable people. I'll vouch for them. Here's a list of our investors, and I still vouch for them. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I guess I better have another talk with Sarah. Sarah, uh, Mrs. Curtis, is on her way to Tucson. She goes there to buy her clothes. When did she leave? Told me she was leaving early this morning. Be gone two days. From what I've been hearing around here, I thought you'd be the first one to know. Well, her name's here, all right. But then so is the school principal and the widow of Reverend Smith and just about every other respectable person in Tombstone. Now tell me, Clay, uh, how are you going to arrest them? Wholesale or one at a time? Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha, very funny. But your suspicious sheriff would still like to know why she shot Erickson before he could be interrogated. Any suggestions? September 17, 1881. Mrs. Curtis was due back from Tucson, and a troubled Clay Hollister rode out to welcome her and to again study the mysterious gentlewoman. doing out here. Yeah, I just wanted to see that you got back all right. Oh, well, come on in the house. Uh, you sure look wonderful. Well, thank you. Well, come on in. Uh, no, I better not. I've got to get back to Tombstone. Strange things seem to happen when I'm out there. Well, personally, I think you're jumping to conclusions. Clay, you told me yourself, she has imitation jewelry by the handful. A rare black diamond, just exactly like the one Lucky got killed for? Maybe. And until you know for sure, at least give her the benefit of the doubt. Well, I'm going to make sure. The top nut's got another shipment of bullion about ready to go out. What are you doing? Writing you a headline. I'll give you the details later. You sure you want me to print this? Print it. All right. I'll print it. September 18. I had planted Clay's story, and the epitaph had avid readers. It's true. Production's been beyond our expectations. We're going to get back some of that money those scoundrels caused us both to lose. But I can't understand the editor printing this story. Every detail is here. And the sheriff made a particular point on keeping this shipment secret. Clay Hollister? Mm-hmm. Well, thank you for relieving my mind about the loss from the holdup. Oh, any time, you know. Thank you. The night of September 18th. Clay, what's troubling you? Oh, nothing. Oh, Clay, dear. Oh, I just don't like to upset you. All right, I'll tell you. Did you see that article in the epitaph about the shipment from the Tough Nut Mine? Well, I planted it. You planted it? You mean there isn't any shipment of bullion? Oh, there's going to be a shipment, all right, and a very rich one. But it isn't going out on the stage with my deputies. I don't understand. They're taking out a fake load. Anybody who holds up that stage will get empty boxes for his pains. I'm taking the real bullion on the back roads, plain wagon, all by myself. <laughs> The morning of September 19, a reception was being planned for the deputies and Sheriff Hollister. No, I tell you the deputies will be guarding the real shipment on the stage. Why would he lie to you? Because he knows. How? You'll have to kill him. Hollister? Not me. I still got some living to do. Ned and me will take care of the deputies. As for Hollister, he's your lookout. 
All right, I'll look out for him. I have to. The tin will set the dynamite off, all right. All we got to do is wait for him to get to us now. Come on. It was the last likely spot for an ambush. Sheriff Clay Hollister hoped he owed Mrs. Curtis an apology. Hey. So am I. Well, I guess you'll live. I'm not so sure I want to. I don't like jails. Clay, I didn't believe you about the bullion. The boys are at Mule Mountain, waiting to ambush the stage. Dynamite. Well, thanks for telling me. I wish I'd told you a lot more sooner. I'll send a doctor back for you. Clay, I'm glad I missed. find the right pieces. First, you better pick off any deputies the dynamite don't get. Ah! All right, drop the pistol.
you. There must be thousands of dollars worth of stuff down there, besides these. Plus what they'll recover from her Tucson go-between. They've already arrested him. Yuma Prison. She was such a gentlewoman, I can hardly believe it. It wasn't easy. For me either. I'd have given a lot not to believe it. Maybe even one of these? Tombstone, Arizona Territory, September 17, 1881. It's a sheriff's job to give help and assistance to anyone in trouble. There's no extra pay and no overtime, and sometimes the only bonus you get is a bullet hole. But if you're a good sheriff, you work around the clock and you don't count the hours. This was one of those rare mornings when Sheriff Clay Hollister didn't have a thing to do. Harris! Harris? Oh, come on in. Morning, Clay. What's up? Oh, well, nothing. I just saw you going by. It's good to see you. Why? Uh, one of those mornings. Sit down. Why? Well, to talk. It's a trouble with people today. They don't have time to sit down and talk. Now, now come on, sit down. You want to make it a dull day for me, too? Why don't you go talk to your prisoners? There's only one back there, old Uriah. <laughs> Again? Yeah, he's sleeping it off. All I can get out of him is snores. Well, you've got your problem. Mine's breakfast. See ya. Well, uh, uh what are you, what are you gonna have for breakfast? Oh, the usual. Poached yeah. eggs, yeah. toast. Yeah. Oh, confound it, Clay. You know what I have for breakfast. Why don't you talk to your wanted posters or your... Pictures on a wall. I, uh, I just straightened that. When you're cockeyed. Thanks. Oh, gosh, Clay, I'm sorry. Oh, that's all right, Harris. It's all right. No great damage. Go on to breakfast. That's not what I'm sorry for. Oh, real bad omen, real bad. What it? Your picture, too. So? So it means somebody's gonna be killed today, and you're involved in it. You, uh, you just make that up? That's right. Uh-huh. You said you didn't have anything to do today, so, uh... I just thought that I'd uh, give you something to think about. Somebody gonna get killed. <laughs> how, do you, how do you suppose superstitions like that really do get started? I don't know. I suppose somebody makes a wild statement like I did. And it comes true. account from the pages of my newspaper, The Tombstone Epitaph. This is the way it happened, in the town too tough to die. Tombstone Territory. caused enough trouble last night at the Oriental. I did? Yeah. One table, three chairs, and 15 glasses. Well, any man's got a right to a little fun. <laughs> fun, huh? Uh, you know what's wrong with this world, Clay? Uh, Nobody ain't got no more sense of humor. Clay Hollister? Not me. Mr. Hollister, I want you to put me under arrest. I want you to lock me up. 
keep me locked up. So I, so I can stand trial. The jail in Tombstone is as good as any in the territory. It is clean, well-built, and comfortable. No one goes there voluntarily. At least they didn't until Chris Anderson rode into town. I just had to make sure you were Clay Hollister. But why is that so important? Because I want to get back to Brewster Flats. Alive. And you're the only man in the territory I can trust. Well, what's in Brewster Flats? I'm wanted for a robbery. A robbery I didn't do. Oh, you want to stand trial and clear yourself, huh? That's right. That's why I need your protection. Without it, they'll kill me. Who's they? The men who did the job. Sheriff Bins and his deputy, Tom Hatch. Also, you know the sheriff. I know of him. He's a hard man, but he's an honest one. <laughs> honest? You're living in the past. He's not so honest anymore. I was driving the gold to Brewster Flats. Bins and Hatch were going to meet me at Twin Forks. That's where I was going to give them the gold. They were going to blame it on bandits, and we were going to split the money three ways. Only I knew they were going to kill me anyway. So I hid the gold before I got there. And you gave him the slip? Yeah, I had to go off the side of the road to do it. Well, where's the gold now? I know where it is. Why didn't you just take it back to Brewster Flats? I needed a bargaining point in case they caught me. That's quite a yarn. It's the truth. Might have a tough time proving it in court. Now, they'll believe me. They'll believe me when I show them where the gold is hid. Where do you figure I fit into this? Sheriff Bins has a warrant for my arrest. Dead or alive. I want you to protect me from him. Well, how do I know you're telling the truth? Why would I come to you with a lie? If you don't mind, Clay, I, I'm going over to the saloon. Zariah, didn't last night teach you anything? Oh, I ain't going over there to drink. Yeah. I'm going over there to work off the damage I done. You know, it isn't everybody in this town that draws down a regular paycheck. Hey, Clay, give a look. Kid, come here. That Sheriff Bin's all right. You know, we've all got our problems. I thought you said there were two men chasing you. There were two, Bin's and Hatch. And where's Hatch? Well, how do I know? Maybe Bin's killed him. Look, don't take any chances with Benz. He'll do anything to save his skin. Well, Hollister, I see you've taken Anderson into custody. That's mighty cooperative of you. What's he done here, kid? You look sick. Where's your deputy? What deputy? Tom Hatch. I don't need no deputy to bring in a kid. I was told that Hatch is with you. You were told wrong. What do you say, boy? I told my story. I see. I see. The kid must have done a lot of talking. I suppose he told you I planned to kill him. It was mentioned. What else he tell you? Well, why don't you try to guess? <laughs> Hollister takes a heap of jumping and keep up with a lion man. I just ain't as agile as I used to be. If there's any lion, he's doing it. The jury and Brewster Feist will decide that. Here's the warrant, all sworn, signed, and legal. Yeah, it means a bullet in my back and him claiming I tried to escape. Oh, he's got it all figured. He wants the gold. You sure got a heap of imagination, kid. I'm taking him back. Is that clear, Hollister? Yeah, you're within your legal rights. He's lying, I tell you. So you say. Would I want to go back to Brewster Flats if I was lying? Or I'd throw away 30 years of my life for a few bags of gold. Look, I'm not going back with him. You just take it easy, boy. Let's hear your side of the story. Oh, well, this beats all. 30 years as sheriff, and now I'm mistrusted by a member of my own team. I don't know what the star means to you, but to me it means scars, lots of scars. It's a tough job and a thankless one. They don't sit right to be challenged by a lion kid. When we learned the gold was overdue, Tom and me investigated. Caught the kid trying to hide the gold. He's lying! It was any proposition me to share the gold with him. And you know, when a man's face with such an enormous temptation, I admit I gave it some thought. 
That's when he gave us the slip. Enough talk. He's going back on that final. I guess murder is legal when you're wearing a badge. I counted on you, Hollister. They're all the same. You catch them, they turn to jelly. The worst killer I ever knew cried for his mother when they hung him. You learn a lot in 30 years. suspect from Brewster Flats. Oh, that gold robbery. I heard yeah. about it. Is the kid guilty? Well, he says not. <laughs> they always do. He accuses Sheriff Binns. Well, now that's a novel idea. You know, it never occurred to me to accuse you of any of our robberies. Look, Harris, what do you know about Binns? Oh, good, Sheriff, if you like him tough. Yeah, but has he ever been in any trouble? Not to my knowledge. Why all the questions? Well, I heard two stories. Both of them are possible. I didn't want to turn the boy over to Binns. Well, when a sheriff and his deputy come to pick up their prisoner, I'd say that you'd have to believe them instead of the prisoner. Did you say deputy? Yeah, I reckon that's who it was. Big fellow rode in with Binns, stayed over the Crystal Palace while Binns came looking for you. How do you happen to know all this? I'm a reporter. Look, Harris, are you, are you absolutely sure about the second man? Sure, I'm sure. You don't trust anybody today, do you? Hey, what's up? Just what I'm going to find out. Me. You sure took long enough. It took a while to talk Hollister out of his prisoner. All right, kid. Take it easy, Tom. It's Hollister. I'll handle it. Well, Hollister, I didn't expect to see you so soon again. That's your deputy? I guess I lied a little. Nothing serious. Just a matter of pride and good sense. If I got around how much I need him, I'd be through as sheriff. Get the point? Yeah, I guess I see what you mean. Say, Benz, I think I'll ride along with you to Brewster Flats. Well, now, that's very generous of you, but I think we can handle the kid ourselves. Well, 50 miles is a pretty long way. Wouldn't want anybody to get hurt. You sure take your job serious, don't you? You got any objections, my company? No, not at all. I have nothing to hide. Two lawmen or three. As long as we bring a prisoner into Brewster Flats. I'm glad you see it that way. Not up, Tom. Guard Anderson. We got a long, hard ride ahead of us. All right, stop grinning and start moving. May an old man give you some advice. I'll listen. Just remember, whatever happens, you've brought it on yourself. I always do, Ben. It's the curse of my life. September 17, 1881. The first fresh stream. The four men had gone about 15 miles, and the sun had not helped to cool hot tempers.
I could get Hollister from here. It wouldn't serve any purpose. I could drop him with one shot easy. Such optimism could be fatal. Why don't you talk English? Meet Kitty before your gun was half out of your holster. You want to bet I ain't faster than he is? You will never live to a ripe old age, that's for certain. We can't take him to Brewster Flats. I've been given the matter some thought. There are several ways to handle a man like Hollister. When I need your gun, I'll tell you. Well, don't wait too long. What do you suppose they're up to? Let them talk. We've got the horses. You've got to face the facts, Hollister. You're going to have to kill them sooner or later. You're beginning to sound as bloodthirsty as Hatch. But they'll kill you. As long as you're alive, I've got a chance. Without you, I'm... Well, I'll try to stay alive just for you. There's something else. Tonight, when we make camp, they can take turns sleeping. You can't take that chance. What kind of shape do you think you're going to be in after two days of that? What do you think I ought to do? Just walk over there and blast them? You could claim self-defense. I testify as a witness. I'll get you some water. I'll keep an eye on the kid. Tom, just keep on walking. How do you keep him around? Saved my life once. You don't look that sentimental to me. Or honest either, huh? Let me tell you something. All my life I've been like you. Honest, brave, and broke. Now I'm coming to the end of the line. What have I got to show for it? Nothing. I know why you followed us here, Hollister. We're two of a kind. It isn't just because of the badge, either. It's an awful lot of gold that kid's got buried away. Enough for four men. Big of you to include the boy. Greed doesn't get you anything but an early grave. We split the gold. The kid takes off for Mexico. You go back to Tombstone. Tom and I continue to keep the peace at Brewster Flats. That's simple, huh? The kid escaped, that's all I'll say. My reputation will carry me through. Well... You make it sound real tempting. What good is a halo if you wear it so tight it gives you a headache? I've had a headache all my life. It ain't worth it. You gotta admit it makes better sense than us killing each other. Now, do you want five minutes to wrestle with your conscience, or is it a deal? Let's go talk to the boy. Tell him. He'll believe it coming from you. You want the gold, boy. Four-way split, and my word on it, you can take off from Mexico. Your word, a lot that means now. Who's here to be given orders? It's all right, Tom. I know what I'm doing. All right, we'll try it your way. Then we're all agreed? As long as we're suddenly partners, how about untying my hands? First, you'll take us to the gold. Oh, I see. Nothing like trust among friends, huh? What's the matter, Hollister? Your halo's still pinching? How much farther? A few minutes. Gold better be there. The gold right under there. It's 
Suppose after we dig up the gold, they make a run for it. Now, Tom, you saw the trail. We could kill them before they got 100 yards. Give me your hands. There's a gun in my saddle blanket. Be ready to use it when I tell you to. I underestimated you. I'm just full of surprises. Go get your shovel. What's the biggest sum of money you ever had in your fist at one time? My own or somebody else's? I once had $10,000 in my hand. Yeah. Caught two bank robbers and recovered the loot. When I returned to the bank, they gave me a smile and thank you. anything yet. Keep digging. You gotta expect to do some work for a fortune. Yes, sir. You got ten thousand dollars the prettiest sight I ever saw. Hey, I think I hit something. All right, hold it, both of you. Get the guns. Good work, boy. I guess your halo doesn't pinch as much as I thought. Okay, now drop your gun, Bell Hollister. Come on, drop it, quick! Sure hate to be shot with my own gun. <laughs> well, you know, you sure disappointed me, Alistair. I thought you were going to kill Benz and Tom for me. It's the only reason I came to you. Now I got to do it myself. Well, in that case, I guess I'll keep my gun. Well, in that case, you'll be the first one to go. That's right. It's empty. You see, boy, I wasn't quite sure whose team you were on. Anybody else got any wild ideas? I didn't think I could trust you. Well, I'll let you carry the gold back. That way you'll have something to think about on the way to your jail. Well, crime took a holiday while you were away. We should do the same thing while I'm here, too. Yeah, you had yourself quite a time. Ellen got the report by wire. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're going to have quite a trial over there at Brewster Flats. Wonder how many more lies that boy can think up to tell. <laughs> how much gold was involved? About ten bags of dust. Ten thousand dollars, roughly. Whew. Well, no wonder Ben succumbed to temptation. Now, there's an interesting thought. What's that? What would you or I do when faced with such a big temptation? Would we even consider it? Well, it might depend on how many ways we had to split it. I've seen temptation, and I say, don't do it. <laughs> Working in that saloon over there. Billions of bottles all over the place. Lovely bottles. All sizes and all shapes. It ain't right to expose any man to temptation. All right, Jariah, come on. Don't bother, Mr. Hollister. I can find my own way. Well, there's your answer, Harris. Big temptation comes along, you run. And lock the door behind you. 
June 23, 1884. A train was passing close to Tombstone, Arizona Territory, carrying a party of roistering political conventioneers headed for Chicago. But two of the men on the train were not going to Chicago. boys don't look happy. Why ain't you happy going to Chicago to nominate that great American Grover Cleveland? <laughs> Say, you ain't Blaine men, are you? Why, we'd throw Blaine men right off of this train. Now, look here. I don't want any trouble. I'm Bledsoe, Deputy Marshal from San Antonio. And this here's Sam Carver. Murdered an express agent in the holdup. Then broke jail by killing an unarmed guard. I ran him down in Prescott, and now we're heading back. And neither of us is in the mood for any hijinks. Well, maybe you don't feel like hijinks, Marshal, but the condemned man looks like he needs a little cheering up. How about a drink, Carver? He's not drinking. What's the harm in the poor devil having a bracer? Huh, boys? All right. If I let him have one drink, Will you boys leave us alone? Quite sure, Marshal. Just one little drink. And so it's the Grove of Cleveland. Stand in your tracks. This man that moves up, kill him. Actual account from the pages of my newspaper, the Tombstone Epitaph. This is the way it happened. In the town too tough to die. Tombstone Territory. June 24, 1884. All right, Clay. Uh, bring in your diary up to date. No accounts, book work, reports. People have the idea that being a sheriff is one-tenth chasing after criminals and nine-tenths sleeping in the sun. Ah, don't get yourself all riled up so early in the morning. It's bad for your liver. And I hear you've got somebody to chase. Yeah, Sam Carver. He was being taken in for murder when he jumped a train last night north of here. Sam Carver? Wasn't he mixed up in that cattle rustling and butchering ring here about three years ago? That's right. I couldn't prove anything definite on him, but feeling was running so high in town that I had to move him out of Tombstone for his own protection. Say, I'm gonna go out and talk to his sister, Amy Hendricks. She and uh, Roy are mighty good people, Clay. Hard workers, devoted to that youngster of theirs. And it's a wonder what they've done to the old Walker place since they took it over now. Now, why ride out there and get Amy all upset about her brother? She'll get the news soon enough. Lucy? What do you mean? Well, Carver's on foot without money and supplies. He just might head for the place where he's sure getting help. If he suddenly showed up there, Roy and Amy might get involved. I want to make sure they don't.
Roy and Amy Hendricks aren't the kind of aid and a better murderer, even if he is a relative. Well, maybe not, but the report said Carver was armed. He may not have a choice. <laughs> Hi, Mr. Hollister. It's a fat, sassy coon you got there. His name is Bandit. See the mask over his eyes? Yeah. So your folks home? Well, Pop ain't, but my mom is. Bruce, it's almost lunchtime. Well, hello, Clay. What brings you out to see us? Well, I, uh... You better go wash up, Bruce. Yeah, sure. Yeah. See you later, Mr. Hollister. Yes, Clay. The boy tells me your husband isn't home, Mrs. Hendricks. I'm sorry. I wanted to talk to both of you. When was the last time you heard from Sam? About eight months ago, he wrote us from San Antonio. He needed money. He's not in trouble, is he? I'm afraid so. What happened? He killed two men, badly injured another one. Oh, no, there must be some mistake. Well, Sam's always been rough and wild. And he's been weak, but... Well, Sam wouldn't kill. I'm sorry, ma'am. There is no mistake. You haven't changed a bit, have you, Clay? You always were ready to condemn him without proof. Why did you come out here, Sheriff, just to gloat? No, ma'am. I came out here to prepare you and to warn you. Of what? Well, there's a chance that Sam may come to you for help. If you give it to him, it's a criminal offense and subject to prosecution. Sam wouldn't come near us or Tombstone. I hope not, because if he does, I expect you to let me know. You expect? You expect, even if he were to come here, what right have you to expect me to betray him? My right as the representative of the people that gave me this badge? Your neighbors, friends. Would you betray them? Go away, please. At times, I'm not overly fond of my job. This happens to be one of them. I suppose you were just doing your duty. I'm, I'm sorry. All I'm asking is for you and Roy to be careful. You will have it then that blood's thicker than water, won't you? Isn't it? Majesty of the law seems a little crestfallen. There is there ought to be a special course in how to deal with women. Kitten have claws? Oh, no, no, not that, but I did get her upset. Maybe you're right. Maybe it is all for nothing. Now, one thing I've learned in a checkered career, Clay, the view's terrible looking backward. If you made a botch of things, forget it. Thanks. And as for women, you could study them for the rest of your life and wind up an ignoramus on the subject. As Alexander Pope said, woman's at best, a contradiction still. Mr. Clyburn, you're a great comfort to me. Not me. Alexander Pope. Said Sheriff. That. Sheriff said what? When? Well, yesterday. They're looking for you, Sam. They say you killed two men. Amy. It wasn't like that. You gotta believe me. I killed the first man in self-defense. I was innocent, but they were gonna hang me anyway. 
And the second man? I tried to get away. The guard tried to gun me down like a dog. It was either him or me. Oh, Sam, I knew you couldn't kill anybody. We haven't got any time for any tears. I'm hurt, Amy. I need help bad. Oh, your leg. What have you done to it? The iron cut it when I jumped off the train. I hobbled for miles. The leg swole up. Then an old Mexican in a wagon picked me up. He saw the irons, but he didn't care none. Not when I gave him my watch. How long have you been up here? Why didn't you call me sooner? I came in last night. I didn't dare rouse anybody. I don't know who's all living here on the place with you and Roy. Maybe a hired hand or two, nervous with a shotgun. Where is Roy? He's away, but he'll be back soon, maybe even tonight. There's nobody here but Bruce and me. Just as well. I was figuring on trouble with Roy anyway. He's always been too righteous for me. Sam, you know you and Roy never got along, but he wouldn't deny you help, not with your hurt like this. He loves me. Why, he'd do it even if just for my sake. I can't wait for Roy. I've got to get these irons off. Have you got a, a fence wire cutter on the place? No, I don't think so. Our land's not fenced. Then you'll have to go to Tombstone and buy one. The heaviest one you can get. All I want for now is to sever through this chain so I can straddle a horse. Well, what are you waiting for? With any luck at all, I can be clear into Mexico by tonight. All right, Sam. I better take Bruce with me, though. We don't want him to learn you're up here. Young boys sometimes can't keep secrets. Do as you like. Bring me some grub before you go. All right. And Amy. Yes? Watch your tongue. Well, yes, Sam. Well, now here's the muslin and the thread. There's the beans and the bacon. Now, was there anything else, Miss Hendricks? No, I think that'll be all. Huh? Oh, uh, Roy asked me to get him a pair of wire fence cutters, the heavy kind. Oh, you're building a fence, huh? I've just got the ticket for Roy. Hello, Bruce. Hello, Mr. Editor. Oh, good morning, Amy. Good morning. How's Mr. Roy? Oh, he's fine, thank you. Well, now, Lee should get the job done. Well, good morning, Miss Editor, and what can I do for you? There's no hurry, Esau. You go right ahead. Something sort of personal. Oh, I'll be with you in a jiffy. Now, that'll be five dollars and a half. I'll put the bacon right in there and the beans here. I'll keep these here so they'll be out of the, the dust. There you are. Thank you very much. Now, I'd better let Bruce carry the cut it because they're kind of heavy. Here you are. Goodbye, Mr. Clavin. Goodbye, Miss Hendricks. Goodbye, Esau. Goodbye. Say hello to Roy for me. Hello. And now, what was that personal matter of yours? Clay Hollister. <laughs> We're just fresh out of Clay Hollister's. <laughs> what I came to see you about, he saw I didn't want to mention him in front of the lady. Need some new suspenders. They lost their snap. Oh. <laughs> well, I guess if you were as old as they are, you'd have lost your snap, too. <laughs> you know what? I just got these in. And they're highly recommended to keep everything taut and tidy. Well, you should do the trick. Yes. You know, I got them in special for you. Because we can't have our editor losing his trousers, can we? <laughs> I tell you. The night of June 25, Roy Hendricks came home to his anxious and worried wife. Roy, please come into the house before you go to the barn. Amy, what's wrong? It's way after midnight. Is Bruce... I no, mean, no, nothing... darling, he's all right. Sam's here. He's in the loft. He's hurt and he's sick and the law's after him. Amy. Roy, please. They say he killed two men, but he told me how it happened. He couldn't help himself. Oh, Roy, I've been so frightened without you there. 
Amy, you've got to realize and understand what this means. If Sam's in trouble with the law, innocent or not, we don't dare get mixed up in it. But he's so sick. And they had chains on his legs. I went into town to get a cutter to get him off, but by the time I got back, he was burning up with fever. He was too sick to get away like he wanted to. All right. But sick or not, we've got to find some way to get him out of here. Roy, don't antagonize him. He has a gun. See that lake? Looks like blood poisoning to me. Reckon we better get you a doctor and fast or you're a dead man. I'm not Doc Cunningham in Tombstone. He knows me. He turned me into Hollister. But for Amy, I'd turn you in myself. She thinks this wasn't any fault of yours. It wasn't. Might have known the help I'd get out of you, Hendrix. So you to see me dead. Suit me more if you were a long ways away from here. Roy, I got the chain cut. And I'd been gone before now. But the sickness come over. I'm as weak as a kitten. Uh, there's a halfway kind of doctor living over at Pima Tanks. Drunk most of the time. Does his doctrine on cattle and horses when he's middling sober, but I guess he's better than nobody. What makes you think he won't play it? Money. He's done his share of patching up the law's bullets. I'll pay it, Sam, just so I can get shut of you as fast as I can. How long to get him? <sighs> Bone tired. Got to get a little sleep. I'll leave at daybreak with the buckboard and be back here around noon, maybe. Remember, I'm doing this for Amy. If I had my way, I'd run you off as you are or turn you over to the sheriff. Thanks. I'll remember. Hello, Harris. Good morning. I was passing a telegraph office, and this just came through for you. Oh, thank you. It's a follow-up on the Carver case. Bledsoe, the deputy marshal, had a concussion, but he'll be all right. Oh, well, now I don't have to open it. What do you mean? Oh, you told me what it said. Well, naturally glanced at it as I brought it over. My newspaper instinct. Naturally. Hey, this description of Carver's interesting. Description? You know what he looks like. Yeah, but I didn't know he was wearing leg irons when he jumped off the train. Leg irons? Mm-hmm. Yeah. First information said he'd freed himself. Harris, if Carver's weighted down with irons, he's got to be close around here somewhere. And he's got to have help to get rid of him. Well, what's the matter? Clay, it might just be. Oh, confound it, it's got to be. What has to be? Amy Hendricks was in Stellings yesterday buying fence cutters, big ones. Now that I think of it, the Hendricks place is unfenced range. My deputy's due back here in a couple of minutes. Tell him where I've gone, have him stand by around the office. Now there wasn't much doubt in Sheriff Clay Hollister's mind, or mine either. Sam Carver had to be at the Hendricks ranch. Carver was a tough enough proposition in himself but there were to be added complications. Not wanting Bruce to know about his uncle, Amy had kept Carver's hideout a secret. Come on, bandit. You gotta learn how to walk with a leash, and I can take you into town with me. Come on, bandit. Don't you ever want to learn nothing? Come on. Bandit. Bandit, come on. Bandit. Bandit, where are you? Bandit. Don't you think you can get away? Bandit? Mom! Mom! Shut up, it's your uncle. Mom! Please, uh, let me go. Mom! Mom! Please, let me go. 
Please help me, Mom! Sheriff! Mom! Please, Mom! Sheriff, he's got bruised. Stay back. He'd kill your sister or not. My brother's sick. He's half out of his head. I've got to get Bruce. Stay here. Let me take care of him. Hello, Sam. Let's you and I talk this over. No use to talk, Sheriff. You know I'm holding all the cards. Make your fight a man's fight. Let the boy go. You want him to stay healthy? Take off your gun belt. All right, Sam. Just don't hurt that boy. That's more like it. Now, no tricks, mine. But the boy gets it. Amy, come in here. Sam, he's your own nephew. It's no good. He's already killed two men in cold blood. You think he's going to start acting like the fond uncle now? Shut up. Amy, fix me some grub in a sack and a canteen of water. Me and Bruce are taking Hollister's horse. Go on. can't ride very far. If that leg doesn't get you, I will. Not with this little insurance policy on the saddle in front of me. If the law comes within gun range of me, the brat dies. Now go on outside. Son? Sure, Pop. Bullet went clean through. Nothing busted. How about the other ones? You won't have to do anything for him. Let's get him inside. I'm sorry, Clay. It was my fault. I believed him. It is thicker, isn't it? But it spills just as easy. June twenty seventh, eighteen eighty four. Buy us some breakfast? Oh, no, thanks. story. You want to read it? You helped write it. Just help me forget about it. You know, you've got one unhandy quality in a lawman, Clay. Sensitivity. Every time you're forced to kill a man, you're in the dumps for days. You know, you saw was right. These are good. Good sheriff, good suspenders. Give the citizen a nice, secure feeling.
Tombstone, Arizona Territory, July 8, 1885. There you go, Jimmy. You uh, figure this is the way to make the trip to Larrabee without us along? Well, I'm not carrying gold, Wayne, just a, just a court paper. Worth more than gold to the man who doesn't want to hang. Clay, be careful. Well, if I run across him, I will be. And while I'm gone, don't you get any holes in your star, either. That's your father right up my right. Stepfather. Maybe I could put up with you as long as Mother was alive, but I don't have... If you think you're going to run off like this... Watch me. I... You traveling, Miss Worth? As far as I can get from him and all I've known here. I didn't expect this kind of interference from the law. She's old enough to make her own decisions. Besides, those who know you won't think she's wrong. All right, Swoogie, line them up. A sheriff often welcomes the chance to get out of town and away from trouble. Even if he thinks he could be riding right into it. An actual account from the pages of my newspaper, the Tombstone Epitaph. This is the way it happened, in the town too tough to die. Tombstone Territory. Tombstone, it was a grinding two days ride to Larrabee, if the coach got through. Would you say this is a dangerous run to Larrabee, Sheriff? I never like to make predictions, but uh, the stage is just full of bullet holes, Mr. Uh, Mr. Willis, isn't it? You don't seem very concerned. Well, we're safe enough as far as Dry Creek Station, the other side. So I heard. I was hoping that was only a rumor. Mm, not entirely. We pick up a couple of guards at Dry Creek, though. Oh, uh, Miss Worth, if you'd like to take a nap, I'm sure Mr. Clark wouldn't mind moving over. Forget about me. Leave me be. You're in a fine mood. Look, when I want your opinion... A few weeks in one of those dance halls and you won't recognize yourself. You can see that's what you want. You make up your mind mighty fast, Mr. Clark. Maybe too fast? I'd like to agree with the sheriff of the importance of parental guidance. Look, will everybody please talk about something else? You should have left her back in Tombstone. That old man of hers is probably right. What are you, a gunfighter or just learning how? I've learned well enough to... Why don't you leave the lady alone, Clark? We've got a long way to go. I agree with the sheriff. Let's be pleasant with one another. It's a long two-day ride in this coach, and safe all the way, I hope. As miles roll by, a coach filled with four people seems to grow smaller, as tempers grow shorter. <laughs> all right, Clark. Well, what was that all about? I warned you about him, Sheriff. I just wanted to see how it was with the great clay Hollister of Tombstone. I don't figure it'd be such a tough job after all. Clark, what's got into you? It's like sitting down next to a rattlesnake. Oh, it's not that bad, Miss Worth. 
He's just a boy with a lot of curiosity. Boy. He'll learn that guns aren't to be played with. Look, if you think I don't know how... If he lives that long. I don't like the look of this country. Wait till he gets on the other side of Dry Creek. Well, we're on schedule anyway. There's Silver Gulch. Sounds like money. Somebody strike it rich at Silver Gulch. You've got to have a sort of special sense of humor for a lot of things around here. Party of people ran into some Indians years back. Their bones turned sort of silver. Got that name. Well, what do we got to worry about? We got the great Clay Hollister with his guns and all. Why, just one look at him and a real bad man at high tail for the hills. Eh, hey, Sheriff? I hope not. Don't like running after people to bring him back. Takes a lot of time, saddle leather. Sheriff, I'm a trifle curious about this trip you're making to Larrabee. Not that I know anything about law enforcement, really, but... Well, I did happen over here something uh, said to you back in Tombstone about a court paper you're carrying. Something about a murder case. Well, I see no reason to be mysterious about it since we're all so friendly like this. A man by the name of Rowan's under indictment for killing in Larrabee. He's out on bond. I'm carrying a key ruling from the circuit judge. A matter of life and death. Not mine, I'm pleased to say. It's very interesting. This Rowan a man you know? No. You ever seen him? No, not even that. I can't recall meeting you, Mr. Clark, in Tombstone. Just passing through. Not my kind of territory there. But uh, Larrabee might be just the place for folks like me and it's worth here. trip, passengers get to know each other real well, whether they want to or not. A girl like you run away from home and all shouldn't be crying. But ever gave you that idea? So you're not crying. You sure don't seem to be very happy about getting out of Tombstone. I think you're so darn smart. Well, if there's anything I said... I think Ford. you could bother me, somebody like you. I guess not. Anyhow, I just want you to know what I said. Well, I'm sorry. Mr. Clark, if I were you, I wouldn't annoy Miss Worth. What are you talking about? It's obvious she doesn't care to talk to you. Stow it. Stow it. Oh, I don't think he meant... Another little family quarrel? When I thought we were settling down. Mr. Clark had impressed me in his own way, of course of being a really tough sort of man. Now I see he has a gentler side. Ah, stow it. I was just fooling around a little to pass the time. Well, what are you staring at, law man? I might as well tell you, I don't think I can stay cooped up in here with that high-toned big man look of yours all the way to Larrabee. Now, Mr. Clark, I didn't mean to start all this. Should anything be happening here? I don't know. Might be a roadblock up there. Take it easy with that gun till we find out. Yes, if we just keep calm. Rock slide, Sheriff. Nearly spilled all of us. Yeah. Uh, you might as well stay inside, Miss Worth. There's not much you can do out here. Get 
Driver, I'd like to wash my hands. I think we can spare a little water. May I help you, Miss Worth? Thank you. The exercise feels good. Not my kind. Not bad. What do you mean, not bad? Well, that stump had been a man who knew his business. You'd have had a bullet in you just about the time you made your first move. That wasn't my best. No. Now, you're working under a handicap. I don't figure you've killed your first man or done anything really wrong yet. Maybe. When I get me a real big man. Come on, Sheriff. We've lost enough time. of July 8, 1885. Two men are going to ride our guard. Never seen that pair before. Our two men better be here by morning, Sheriff Hollister. Yeah. Hollister? Not Sheriff Clay Hollister, the big man from Tombstone. Hey, couldn't be. Way out here, so far from his protection. <laughs> Those two horses out in front, are they yours? You asking questions, law boy? I don't see any warrant, do you? No deputies either. The sheriff's acting pretty bold, I'd say. <laughs> you worked them mighty hard today. They haven't been watered yet. Is that right? Do you hear what the sheriff says? My, my. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you, sheriff, there ain't much help on the station here. Only the agent there. And he's taking care of us, so... Uh, suppose you take four bits and do the job yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Can we share a room, sheriff? If it's all right with you. Sure. I'd say they'd make a nice pair, wouldn't you? Just lovely. See any answers up there? Am I looking for some? Maybe. You still think you did the right thing in running away from home? I had no choice. I had to leave. I left home when I was 13. It's a funny thing about running. Once you start, it's hard to stop. Do you want to? To stop? Yes. I don't know. Uh, dinner's ready. If you're hungry. May I? 
Sure, I'll help you. And uh, then we all better turn in. We'll be making an early start in the morning. All right. I, uh, I thought I might go out and uh, get some air. Well, don't wonder. You still haven't watered your horses. Horses? I thought you were going to take care of that, Sheriff. <laughs> oh, take care of these while you're at it, will you? Nice and neat. The Sheriff's a fine little housewife, I'd say. <laughs> oh. Sorry about those plates. Put them on my bill. Take care of these. And have them gone by sunup. Well, I'll go water their horses. You fools. The morning of July 9, 1885. A day's ride from Tombstone. A day's ride to Larrabee lay ahead. Guards didn't get here. Bushwhacked, you figure? Maybe. Can't wait now. Too bad. We might need them guards. Think so? I got a bad feeling this morning. We've had some mean holdups on this run. No witnesses. Anybody rather I'd get to Larrabee with a dead sheriff instead of a live one? <laughs> Could be. You want to lay over here? Mr. Clark. Allow me to remind you of a couple of things before we head on for Larrabee. Hurry up, folks. We haven't got all day. All right, go ahead. Reaching the bad stretch now, Sheriff? Just about. So it's just something that we could do. There is. What's that? Relax. Hope for the best. Jim. Jim, I don't understand. I don't understand what. The way you were with me last night, I thought... That, that was last night. You can change this way. And... I get it. I get it. Is that all you can say? That's all I can say. Dusty afternoon wore on. A rambling stage, edgy nerves, three hours from Larrabee. Oh, oh boy. What's this? You're kind of far from Larrabee. Too far, maybe. What's that supposed to mean? I don't like the look of things. Well, you must have been over this run a hundred times. But not with the feeling I got today. And no guards. What is this? Superstition? Not altogether. Just seen some riders making the Rock Canyon cutoff. Maybe, all right. Maybe. So, other men travel this country? You sure surprised me, Mr. Willis. Why so? Calmer all the time. Look, Mr. Willis, maybe we better... You, the gunfighter? It's up to you, folks. We can turn back now or see what happens if we barrel on through. Well, my business in Larrabee won't wait. I'm meeting these mining people. Miss Worth? I... It can't make any difference to me now. 
You, Mr. Clark? Run out the string. Don't matter to me. Well, there's your vote, Larrabee. feeling. Being a law officer? You've got it too, Mr. Willis. Stronger than I have for some reason. I have to ask if you're armed. How about you? Well, I've got this little derringer. Although I'm not sure what I could do with it in an emergency. We may find out. Hi. Stay here. No matter what happens, stay right here. Drop those guns. You didn't take any chances on this job, did you? Shut up, law boy. Tell your lady friend to get out. She's just a girl. She don't matter. Who says she don't? He's right. You don't have to bother her. Oh, this is going to be easier than I thought. Oh, let's keep it nice and clean. We don't want to leave anybody behind that's going to give us any trouble. That means you, first of all, law boy. So step out here. Come on. A little further. I got you two covered. Hold everything right there. You had to kill him, huh, Willis? Yes, Sheriff, I did. You see, my name isn't Willis. I haven't really introduced myself. I'm Rowan. A man they'd hang if you got that court paper to Larrabee. That, uh, that Derringer suddenly grew. Well, like I said, in an emergency. But I've got one more surprise for you. All right, Clark. Just like I promised. You get your first real big man. He ain't armed. Who's ever going to know what happens here? Rowan, you might not be quite as big, but I'd rather start with you. Stay just like you are, boy. Not quite sure of yourself. Stay away from killing your first man. You'll turn out just fine. Matter of fact, why don't you two just kind of stay together? That made it easier for both of you. Last trip to Larrabee and he knew it. Get around back. Clark, get some luggage rope and tie up our friend from the Dry Creek Station. Yes, sir. Oh, and by the way, may not be much of a killer, but uh, can you drive a stage? We still got to get to Larrabee. Yes, sir. A surprise for you, Rowan. The decision of the circuit judge. Evidence against Rowan not sufficient for indictment. Now, of course, you've written your own death warrant. Tombstone, Arizona Territory. The fire of 1882, second worst in the town's history, in which the heart of Tombstone was wiped out. How did it start? Oddly enough, with a wedding.
Bob Tuttle could have been married in his own town of Benson, but he had his own good reasons to be married in Tombstone. Better move to Benson, folks, where life is good. Got a lot of drive, old Pop. Yeah, he's a real live one. He's got more nerve than either one of us. Only well, got married, didn't he? <laughs> he's twice her age. Ooh. Hello, Mansfield. No hard feelings. Get out of Tombstone, Tuttle, and stay out. You're gonna lose the county seat too, Mansfield. the hardware, Mr. Mansfield. He's a crackpot. A dangerous crackpot. Well, maybe. But you can't kill him just because he married your girl. An actual account from the pages of my newspaper, the Tombstone Epitaph. This is the way it happened, in the town too tough to die. Tombstone Territory. July 8, 1882. Pop Tuttle had certainly become a controversial character in Tombstone. A truly surprising man. See you back in Tombstone's as soon. Why not? Well, you didn't just get married. What about a honeymoon? <laughs> Had my honeymoon in beautiful Benson, garden spot of the territory, and next county seat. I thought maybe you might take a week off, show your wife Mexico or the Grand Canyon. I'll tell you another thing. You young whippersnappers take these long honeymoons, and you know why? Oh, well, maybe you better tell me. Because you want to get out of work, that's why. But not me. I like what I'm doing. Selling furniture to the living and pine boxes to the dear departed. Well, hello, Pop. Howdy, Harris. Congratulations. I hope you'll be very happy. Uh, thank you. I can't help but be with Grace. She's a hummer. Bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, and young. No more worn-out females for me. My other wives just couldn't stand the gaff. <laughs> Here's that ad I want you to run. For your furniture store and funeral parlor? Nope. They'll take care of themselves. Once I get the county seat away from you fellas here in Tombstone. I'm not so sure I should print this ad, Pop. Merchants in Tombstone are going to like it. Well, I'm not sure you can refuse. That is, if you want to stay an honest editor. You are one, aren't you? Benson has the railroad. Benson, the hub of stage routes from Tucson, Fort Bowie, New Mexico, and Texas. Look, Harris, I uh, got to get back to the office. Just want to say good work. That headline started a lot of talk. I intended it to. Baptism of fire. An era in the history of Tombstone that'll never be forgotten. Well, I didn't know you had a fire. I didn't see it from Benson. I didn't hear nothing about it. That's the last year's headlines. That was before you moved west. I reprinted that account to remind the people what a real danger fire is. Mm, a lot of damage. Yeah, almost wiped out the town. Thanks to our inadequate fire equipment. The red terror of Tombstone raged unchecked when our valiant firemen ran out of water. Is that all the water you've got in this town? A seven-inch line from the Huachuca Mountains? Yeah, well, of course, we have the reservoir, the storage tank up above town, but that isn't nearly enough to... <laughs> now, look, Pop. Here, I'm going to change my ad. I'm inviting everybody who's afraid of fire to move to Benson. Why, we got more water than we know what to do with. 
Underground river has never been tapped. Look, Pop, that's pretty strong medicine. Well, you fellas here in Tombstone will just have to take it. I'll get you a nice big spoon. <laughs> yes, sir, this will do the trick. Now we'll get that county seat. Why, in Benson, we got water to burn. Hey, <laughs> that's pretty good. Water to burn while Tombstone burns. <laughs> you print that instead of... <laughs> Harris, get some water in the towel. Easy. Uh, easy. Grace. You were at my wedding, Howard. I warned you not to. Why? He asked me to marry him. Took me away from that. Gave me a name. A name? You know I always wanted a name, Howard. But you were more interested in having your name on Tombstone. Well, it just might make you rich. You made a big mistake. No. I know what I'm doing, Howard. In Benson, I'm Mrs. R.C. Tuttle. I belong to a club. You? What kind of a club? I don't know yet. I've been invited to meet the town women in a home, not a whiskey-soaked saloon. You won't be happy. Good day, Mr. Mansfield. Grace is coming. We better help her get him to a doctor. No, no. No, Grace can't know about this. Well, now, wait a minute, now, Pop. Boys, you've got to promise me. Not a word about this to anybody. Not about me falling or stumbling or nothing. Look, Pop, it's all well and good to be proud, but... You... I'll uh, be with you in a minute, my dear. Boys, you've got to promise me. Especially Grace. She can't know. All right. If you'll promise that you'll see a doctor. Of course I'll see a doctor. In Benson. They got better doctors there. I think you'll like it. On you, I'd like a corn husk. Would you, uh, would you like to drive? Well, you're my wife now. Got to get some work out of you. Morning of July 9, 1882. Well, you think we can talk the city council into voting the money? We have to. We need that pumper. It looks kind of like a, a steam engine. <laughs> it's almost what it is. It's a steam pump. Uh -huh. Steam from the boiler operates a pump. That thing will throw a big stream of water clear over a two-story building. Uh, sure ought to do the job until we run out of water. Yeah. I thought you'd be here, Clyburn, since you weren't at the epitaph where you published this filth. What are you, a Benedict Arnold? Ah, just a minute. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. What's this all about? You know what it's about. Printing this trash for Tuttle. Telling people to move to Benson because Tombstone's a fire trap. He's a crackpot. All right, you, Sheriff. Yes, Mr. Mansfield? What do you plan to do about this nuisance, Tuttle? Well, I might try to get him a medal. A medal? Yes, you see, I think it's a good idea for Tombstone to feel that it might lose the county seat. What kind of nonsense is this? Well, now, maybe you'll do something about your town. Back us up. Clay and I are going for the council to ask for $10,000 worth of new firefighting equipment. $10,000? That's ridiculous. We'd have to pay for it in taxes. That's right. Well, I'm going to fight you and get everybody I know to fight you. What we've got's good enough. You take a chance on being burned out again for a few tax dollars. 10000 isn't a few dollars. And if I get burned out, I've got insurance. Yes, I know that. You're well covered, Mr. Mansfield. But most of the rest of the merchants out there with their board and batten shops haven't got a dime's worth of insurance. Well, that's up to them. Most of them can't afford it. After last year's fire, insurance comes pretty high in Tombstone. I think that's pretty cheap protection. All right, all right. 
much water, we got a dandy jail. I'm sorry, Sheriff. I'm just trying to wake this town up to the dangers of fire. Citizens at Tombstone. It's uh, no law again me making a speech, is there, Sheriff? Uh -oh. Just so you don't cause trouble. Thank you. Citizens of Benson. Because that's what you'll soon be after I tell you about the garden spot of the territory. Hold it, old man. It seems there's a question from the audience. I warned you to stay out of Tombstone. I'm warning you once more, the last time. Sheriff said I could make a speech. Well, I'm not standing by like him and the editor. While a crackpot tries to get the people to move to Benson so you can outvote us for county seat. It just makes sense, folks. Why not live in bountiful Benson rather than tremble in Tombstone? Who's trembling? All of you ought to be. What happens during a fire when you run out of water? It's only a matter of time until Tombstone burns again, like it did last year, maybe worse. I think he's going too far. Could be. Why live in fear? Benson welcomes you. The new county seat. You'd like to see Tombstone burn, wouldn't you, old man? Well, if it did, I couldn't help it. Now, could I? Nobody could. And you might just start it burning to get the county seat in Benson. No, Let him come, Hollister. The old goat asked for it. Well, I'm coming in to get him. Now you're asking for it. I wouldn't. I won't forget this, Hollister. Well, that's good. I tried to hit you hard enough so you'd remember. The last warning, Tuttle. Stay out of Tombstone. Better get out of town, fella. Well, I, uh, I guess we are a little bit outnumbered now. July 11, 1882. True to his word, Howard Mansfield had not forgotten the beating dealt him by Clay Hollister. There was bad blood, and it was boiling. Hello, Clay. Oh, Grace. We just drove in from Benson. Mr. Tuttle doesn't know. Things look bad. Yeah, they look bad here, too. The people are really up in arms about the way Tombstone treated Mr. Tuttle. They might do anything. Such as? Some of them have been drinking, you understand. Yeah, yeah, some of them have been drinking here, too. They want to march on Tombstone. And? There's even talk of setting fire to the town. That's great. That's all I need, a civil war, killings, a fire, and all because of Mr. Tuttle and Mr. Mansfield. I tried to calm Mr. Tuttle down, but he's a proud man. He said he's going to continue with his campaign and come back to Tombstone. He said the devil with Howard Mansfield. Yeah. Well, I'm going to stop him. Look, Grace, I can't talk to Mr. Mansfield. He won't listen to me. Maybe you can. No. No, Clay, not that. He was once in love with you. Maybe he still is. And he's the only one that's keeping this feud alive. He might drop it for you. Well, look, I, I know it's a lot to ask, but you don't want to see Tuttle dead, do you? And if they get liquored up and fire this town... Well, just last year, 66 shops were wiped out. $175,000 worth of property damage. They could estimate that. But they couldn't put a price on the lives that were lost. All right, I'll talk to him. Yes, Mrs. Tuttle. Howard, I, I came to talk to you about Mr. Tuttle and the people in Benson. Yes, Mrs. Tuttle. They're angry, Howard, dangerous. They may come to Tombstone, and there's talk of fire. 
Fire. You're his wife. Why did you come to warn me? Well, there are a lot of people to think about. We never used to think of other people, only us. Yes, Mrs. Tuttle? You don't have to keep calling me Mrs. Tuttle. I'm not Mrs. Tuttle. Not really. Can't we leave, Howard? I made a mistake. I want what we had. Yes, we can leave as soon as I straighten out my affairs here. Oh, can't we leave now, fast, before I... Before you change your mind? I won't change my mind. But it'll be a lot easier for everyone if... If we leave fast, I'll pack and leave as soon as you say. Leave him tonight. Tonight. It won't take me long to straighten out my affairs here in Tombstone. I think Tombstone's had his day already. Lenny, Riggs. Grace. I'm leaving, Mr. Tuttle. I was coming by the store to tell you. night of July 11, 1882. Fire. The Red Terror had again struck Tombstone, this time with helping hands. volunteer firefighter was the sure knowledge that our so-called fire wagon was inadequate. Besides, you got no proof. How much proof do you need? Wait a minute. Grace. Where's Pops? I left him. And that's why Tuttle sent his men from Benson to burn me out. I still say we ought to hang him. And I still say hold it. 
Where is he? He's dead. He's dead? When I told him, he just died. Where? Back home. I think you better tell us about it. He was a good man. But it's always been home. Don't you understand? Go on. We planned to leave, Howard and I. And I told Mr. Tuttle. When I told him, he just looked at me for the longest time. And he fell to the ground. He didn't say a word. He just died. I wish he'd said something. But what I said killed him. I killed him! No, Grace, you didn't know. He was a very sick man. I could have told him I was going on a trip. But I did the right thing, didn't I? Telling him I was leaving. Telling him the truth. Call me when the water comes. stairway. Just as well throw those insurance papers in the fire, too. For all the good they'll do you. What do you mean? Well, Tuttle didn't start that fire. And the only people in Tombstone who aren't fighting it are you and those two apes at the bar. Well, that doesn't prove anything. You better pull the dock off the fire line. Yeah, and we still got a fire to fight. Mm -hmm. Keep an eye on it. Thought you oh, would. nothing's gonna happen to me. Not while there's a good county seat war going on. Let's go fight that fire. Mansfield doesn't like my jail. Guess he won't like Yuma prison either. Well, the boys have soaked the other buildings. If the wind doesn't blow up, the rest of Tombstone is safe. Well, I guess we better be getting back to Benson. Mrs. Tuttle? Are you sure you want me to after this? Everybody's entitled to one mistake. I made three before I married you. Of course, it's, it's up to you to decide. Do you want me to drive, Mr. Tuttle? I wish you would. Oh, uh, is it all right if I leave the water wagon on the street for a day or two just to, to advertise Benson? Yeah, thanks. Uh, and remember, gentlemen. When it comes to a vote, let your conscience be your guide. What are we going to do about that man? Well, there's only one thing to do. Elect him mayor of Tombstone. Then maybe we get that equipment. <laughs> Tombstone, Arizona Territory, October 27, 1886. You're early. Harper won't be here until tomorrow. Well, I like to rest up before a job. You got any baggage? I'm wearing them. Clay. 
Look who just flew in from Tucson. Oh, I didn't know Caswell was that scared. Maybe he's just being practical. Young Harper gets in town tomorrow. He's awful fast on the draw. So is Caswell. I've got horses at the livery stable. Caswell is 55, Harper is 24. If he were coming in town to kill me, I'd probably hire myself a gun, too. Might do better to see me first. Introduce me to your friend. Chuck Ashley, Sheriff Hollister. You passing through? Stop by for a visit. You get a short one. We don't want gunfighters in Tombstone. Man's entitled to protect himself as he sees fit. Just mind your own business, Hollister. Your feud with the Harpers has reduced both families to the last man. Why don't you drop it? I'll add to Harper and see what it gets you. Ashley, one wrong move, no matter how slight, I'll slap you behind bars. Is it against the law to spit in Tombstone? Will be if you do it. An actual account from the pages of my newspaper, the Tombstone Epitaph. This is the way it happened, in the town too tough to die. Tombstone Territory. October 28, 1886. It was trouble that came to Tombstone on the following morning, and its name was Jeff Harper. Hello, Jeff. Still here, huh, Sheriff? Not wearing guns, I see. That's right. Jail broke me of the habit. Sam Caz will be happy to hear that. He thinks you've come back to make good your threat to kill him. What do you think? Well, I figure... Time makes a man smarter. You've had five years. So is Caswell. Is he any smarter or just older? You just mind your P's and Q's. Nobody will bother you. Step out of line. I'll have to jump you. Well, I see the Harpers are still marked no good in Tombstone. You both paid a price. Caswell was laid up for a year after your ambush. You went to jail. The way I figure it, that puts Caswell four years up on me. You had fair warning, Jeff. You've done your duty, Sheriff. Now let me do mine, huh? Sneak a loop, Rafe. Ten dollars says he's dead by morning. Twenty says Caswell gets it first. You're on. <laughs> Jeff! <laughs> Jeff Harp! Welcome back, Jeff. Hi, nice to see you. Good to see you. Welcome back, Jeff. Thank you, Joe. Set him up, Joe, and make a double for sure. Jeff. Oh, hold on. Oh, it's you. been five years since I've even smelled this <laughs> ball. <laughs> Here's to our friend Jeff, huh? Here to you, Jeff. You bet. <laughs> wow. Oh, I didn't know I had any friends left. Why? Why? I've always been fond of you, Jeff. You know that. Hey. Caswell's been getting right prosperous since you were away. Land, cattle, horses. He's done right smart by himself. I guess you're going to change his luck, aren't you? <laughs> Look towards the door. His name's Ashley, a gunfighter from Dodge City. Caswell brought him into town yesterday. He don't give you half a chance, does he? Fill it up, Joe. 
Go easy, Jeff. I said fill it up. Do as he says, Joe. I'm paying. You're a real friend, aren't you? You know, things are really going to the dogs around here. I can remember when a man didn't hire a two-bit gunfighter to do his dirty work. You know, boys, I, I met a lot of two-bit gunfighters in jail. Tall ones, short ones, fat ones, skinny ones. All kinds. All kinds, and they all had one thing in common. There wasn't a man among them. Barton. Buy the loudmouth a drink. I buy my own. I said, buy the loudmouth a drink. You bought it. You drink it. Let's see how much of a man you are. Give him a gun, somebody. I'll take care of you when I get good and ready. I say you're ready right now. You give him a gun. Don't worry, Jeff. You can take him. Hold it. You build your reputation by killing men after they've been drinking? Easy, Sheriff. I've got no quarrel with you, yet. Oh, is that a threat? Well, now, why should I threaten you? Star or no star? Just alike. Hired guns, that's all we are. The whole thing's a mistake, Clay. Elmer bought Jeff a few drinks too many. Why blame me? I was only being friendly. Yeah. And yeah, we all know you, Elmer. Your man's best friend. All right, Jeff, let's go. You just not happy unless you're pushing some way around, are you? Boy, you sure make it easy for a man to dislike you. Now start moving. Harper. Next time we meet, wear guns. And leave your nursemaid at home. Questions on who's a man and who isn't? Let me buy the man a drink. What'd you bring me here for? Want to show you something? Oh, I got a headache. Yeah? Maybe this will cure it. I'm your relatives, Jeff. Pete, Joe, Mike. Some of the Caswells. There's Lamb and Bert, Dan, Eddie. This is a particularly interesting one. Terry Wayne, 1881. He wasn't either a Harper or a Caswell. Came out here from St. Louis with his wife and two kids to make his fortune. Had a job with the Caswells. Two days later, he was killed in a Harper ambush. He didn't even know what he died for. Is that the tradition you've come back for? Don't you think I'm sick of this whole thing? I don't want to kill Caswell. I just came back to sell my land. I want to go to California, where nobody's ever heard of the Caswells or the Harpers. Everybody starts pushing me around. Even you. I can only act on what a man does and says. You still think I'm a killer? It's Caswell that needs reassuring. Oh, no. No, not as long as he's got Ashley. And the feud goes on and on. You can stop it. How? By telling Caswell just what you told me. You wouldn't believe me. Look, he's stubborn, but he's not stupid. You can get through to him if you really want to. Well, uh, I'll give it a try. That's 
close enough. Take it easy, Sam. You want to talk, not shoot. Put your gun away. Stay where you are. Speak your piece and then get off my property. Caswell, who told you I was coming back here to kill you? You did. Five years ago. Everyone knows the Harpers always make good their threats. Did you ever figure that maybe everyone could be wrong? You're a Harper. You're a Caswell. What's that got in us? It'll get you some lead if you don't clear out. I wouldn't live in the same town with you. I just came back here to sell my land and get as far away from you as possible. I'm not stopping you. Yeah, but your gunfighter is. Ashley, what about him? Trying to force Jeff into a shootout. That wasn't in our agreement. I only hired him for protection. Protection from what? A man who hasn't touched a gun in five years? Or did you think they let me practice in jail? I never liked Ashley when I saw him. Well, that puts a different light on things, don't it? Better get rid of him before there's serious trouble, Sam. All right. Just the same, I'm wearing a gun from now on. And I'll keep on wearing it as long as you're in Tombstone. And don't worry about Ashley. I'll ride into town with you right now and handle him. No offense, boys, just practicing. Man could get killed that way, huh? Yes, that's a fact, isn't it? Drink? Sheriff and I got things straightened out with Harper, so I won't be needing you anymore. Here's your fee. You can count it. You wouldn't cheat me. Just drop it on the bureau. At a nice town here, Sheriff. There's a westbound stage leaving this afternoon. And one tomorrow afternoon, and one the day after, and one the day after that. Why the hurry? Look, Ashley, there's nothing to keep you here. You're wrong. Both of you. See, Harper said things that no man's ever said to me. It was the whiskey talking. Hmm. I don't see it that way. I don't see it that way at all. It's until I get things settled up with Harper, I'm not living Tombstone. Some people with that attitude have stayed here permanently, up on Boot Hill. The afternoon of October 28, 1886, marked the end of the Harper Caswell feud and the beginning of more trouble. Well, don't let me disturb you. You're not. Just thought you might like to see a proof of next week's headline. Sheriff Hollister ends Harper Caswell feud. That'd be a better headline in the making. Now, Clay, I can't be resetting type every half an hour. Mm. Have you seen Jerry Harper around? Well, he was with Elmer Fern, trying to make a deal on his land. Harris, do me a favor, will you? You name it. Keep an eye on Harper. You expecting trouble from him? No, but he may walk into it. Well, I thought the feud was over. It is. But Chuck Ashley's still in town. Let me know, first sign of trouble. All right. Hollister? Yeah? Aren't you going to do anything about Ashley? He hasn't committed a crime yet. What are you going to do, wait until he kills somebody? I'll take care of Ashley when I think it's the proper time. I'm telling you, the time is now. I'm getting real tired of you, Caswell. You make a mess and then you expect other people to clean it up for you. That's your job, Hollister. That's what you're paid for. Clay! I can recommend that gun highly. 
act of veteran. Pick it up. Ten bucks, Harper refuses. Ten bucks says he don't. What are you waiting for? Your nurse made to come pick it up for you? I've heard it said that the Harpers are a fighting family. Are you sure your name is Harper? Leave it away! Turn around, slowly. I see your nursemaid got here in time. I said turn. Hand me a gun. There's no law in Tombstone that says a man can't carry his gun. There is now for you. I get $500 a job. What's your salary? I'm waiting for your gun. It always seems to narrow down to you and me, doesn't it, Sheriff? Topper I want, not a substitute. Get it, Jeff. Yeah, that one. Your luck can't last. That westbound stage is due in half an hour. You're going to be on it, as my guest. I don't leave without my guns. You get them at the stage. That means that I've got 30 minutes to make my mind up right. I don't care how long you think about it, but you're going to be on that stage. Well, boys, I've got a pocket full of silver and 30 minutes to spend it in. Who'll join me in the Oriental? I was going to pick up that gun. I know. I saw you go for it. So did I, Jeff. Some people will say that I saw you coming, that it was just an empty gesture. It doesn't matter what they say. Yes, it does. It does to me. You've left me no choice, Sheriff. I'm going to have to prove them wrong. I watched him die, Sheriff. Your eye was a big man, a big laugh, a big capacity for life. He used to say, when you die, die well. He died well. He took on three Caswells all by himself. A man can die well and still die for the wrong things. Well, pride isn't one of them. I can't live without pride. Yeah. Neither could they, and not one of them lived past the age of 40. You're not going to talk me out of this, Sheriff. Jeff, you haven't handled a gun in five years. You take on Ashley, that's not bravery, that's suicide. Well, maybe you mean well. But I don't need a nursemaid anymore. All right, Jeff. From now on, Tombstone's out of bounds for you. You set one foot in town before Ashley leaves, I'm slapping you in jail. <laughs> Believe me, Hollister, I didn't expect all this fuss. I was only trying to protect myself against Harper. I'm 55 years old, Hollister. Life becomes more precious to you as you get older. Harper is 24. Don't you think life's precious to him, too? Well, it's a doggy dog world. I know if there's any real trouble, you'll take care of it. Thanks. Stage is pulling in. I hear the smart money is betting that Ashley won't be taking it.
Well, boys, do I take the stage or don't I? Thirty bucks says Ashley don't take it. Sixty bucks says he does. All ready? May I have my guns, please? Certainly. You just made yourself a big mistake, Sheriff. Something wrong, Ashley? There were bullets in these guns when I gave them to you. Oh. Buy yourself a new supply in Tucson. Let's go. Step aside, Sheriff. I've got some unfinished business with Ashley. You're wasting your time, Jeff. There are no bullets in his guns. Get out of the way. I'm telling you the truth, Jeff. You're through telling me anything. Now step aside. Look, there's no point in challenging an unarmed man. Look, for the last time, I don't want to shoot you down, too. Satisfied, Caswell? Earned my paycheck this month? That was pretty neat shooting, Sheriff. Well, I've had five years more practice than you have. Should you gonna need this in California? Yeah, I probably would. That's why I've decided to stay here. I guess it's better to bury feuds instead of men. Will you join us in a drink at the Oriental? No, thank you. That doesn't come under the heading of official business. Alistair, you're getting to be as hot-tempered as I am. I never saw you beat anybody the way you beat up Ashley. What came over you? Well, it's easy. Every time I hit Ashley, I uh, thought about you. I guess I deserve that. Let's go down and get that drink and see if we can get to know each other. Well, Harris, what's your new headline for next week's epitaph? It's three days till deadline. Knowing you, I think I'd better just wait and see. Tombstone, Arizona Territory, August 12, 1885. The Birdcage Theater had just ended the successful engagement of the fabulous Miss Anita Torson. Well, help me. We have to catch that stage. Well, if you'd get rid of some of these silly costumes. Well, they're not so silly. This is the dress I was wearing in Virginia City when you came backstage and introduced yourself. Well, they're not too silly. Oh, I 
What's wrong? Nothing. I've just heard a lot of broken promises. Oh, of uh, marriage? Well, the promise is in the future. And it's almost within reach. After this? Come on. We gotta get that stage. Oh, sure. If it isn't running for a stagecoach, it's running for something else. It's the sheriff. Hurry, get out of here. Glad to see someone. Would you help me, please, Sheriff? Help you? The dray man hasn't come yet. I'm going to be late for the stagecoach. Well, I've asked the stage to wait for a few minutes while I had a word with you. Oh, I suppose you want my autograph. No, ma'am, I have something to give you. Well, how nice. What a surprise. What is it? Warrant for your arrest. <laughs> An actual account from the pages of my newspaper, the Tombstone Epitaph. This is the way it happened. In the town too tough to die. Tombstone Territory. Nonsense is this. If you're making a joke, it's a stupid one. It's no joke, ma'am. In the last six months, there have been eight stagecoach robberies. The question is where the loot's hidden. The authorities in Tucson seem to think you might have the answer. Well, I suppose you think it's hidden on me. No, ma'am, not on you. In your trunk. Oh, now, Sheriff. I'm sorry I lost my temper, but, well, this is ridiculous, and I'm in such a hurry. See? Nothing but costumes. Now, can I go? Surely, ma'am, as soon as I finish searching. Very well, then, search. So embarrassing, and we're wasting such valuable time, and the stagecoach is... We'll wait. The dresses. Oh, may I see that one, please? Might as well tell me. Why? Miss Torchin, you'll be facing a trial in Tucson. If you cooperate, it might be easier for you. You see, about all I know is that the leader in these holdups is a man by the name of Boone Cahill. But I don't even know what he looks like. You do. That's your problem, Sheriff. All right. But it's quite a stage trip to Tucson. Maybe you'll change your mind on the way. I'm getting off at Benson. Tucson. All right. But it is a long ride to Tucson, and you just might meet Boone Cahill along the way. You'll spot him all right, because he'll be the one shooting at you.
can't hold it up any longer, Sheriff. I'm way behind schedule now. Well, you just have to make up time, then. If you say so. You want to put that on top of the rest of the baggage? No, I'll keep it with me. It's going to be a little crowded, Sheriff, but I didn't know you was going to make this trip. Mm, crowded is right. Say, uh, you know either one of those two men? Well, no, neither one. Why? I just thought you might. Let's roll. <laughs> Clay Hollis did. That's right. Dr. Davis from San Mateo. Nice to meet you. You know, you're pretty well known around Arizona. Hello, Gorman. Pleasure to see you again, Sheriff. How are you two uh, know each other? I spent six months in a tombstone jail, courtesy of Sheriff Clay Hollister. You're a lucky man. Majority vote was to hang you. I know. You just called me a tin horn, threw me in. I'm grateful. I only hope someday I can show you how grateful. Gentlemen, uh, we got a long trip together. Let's all calm down. You're right, Doc. Absolutely. And you know, with this uh, Boone Cahill gang running loose, I'm just as happy to have a lawman along. I just hope it's going to be a peaceful journey. Good to have your company. You and... Uh, Mrs. Hollister. <laughs> Gentlemen, this lady is my prisoner. So during our stops, I'd appreciate it if you neither spoke to nor approached her. Sorry if that sounds unfriendly, but uh, it's the way it's got to be. Now, of course, Sheriff. You're only doing your duty. Why, sure. Aren't you afraid she might escape? Healthy woman like that? And only one sheriff to handle her. You have to remember what I said, Gorman. <laughs> uh, well, it's going to be a long trip. Good night. That was a very impressive speech, Sheriff. Afraid there might be a gentleman on the stagecoach who might try and help me? Doesn't it come through to you that their problem is to make sure that you don't testify? There's only one way that they can make sure. Well, I'm not worried, so don't try to frighten me. Besides, I don't want to betray my... Betray your friend? The gentleman that killed an unarmed stage agent? The friendly fellow that pistol whipped the passenger to death? Boone Cahill never murdered anyone. Would you care to talk to the agent's widow or his kids? I don't care to talk at all.
doggone loco, Sheriff. Oh, it must be stopped for a reason. I agree. If we don't stop, we're going to run right through them. That's the idea. <laughs> Shoot will only rile it. station up ahead. Give him a drink. I can stand one myself. That was a close call. Huh? That was close. You'll never know. It is going to be a long trip. afternoon of August 12, 1885. A way station on the road to Tucson, a destination that some of the people were not to reach, alive. Who were they back then? Highway men? Yeah, or Boone Cahill's bunch. Same thing. It would have been wiser to stop and be robbed. Might have all been shot. We weren't. Say, uh, can you get a little drink in there? Yeah. You can also get food. Well, you go to your church and I'll go to mine. Driver. <laughs> you gonna water your horses? After I get a drink. Uh-uh. You stay with me. We'll water the horses. How very romantic. <laughs> I'm starving. You think more of animals than you do of, of people? Sometimes it's hard to tell the difference. <laughs> Thing. Animals don't try to knife you. to the side of the room. Gorman? Who are you speaking to me, Chef? Keep your hands clear and give me your gun.
man go out? Yeah, he sure did. Out back with the rest of us to wash up. Yeah. Well, somebody tried to knife me out there. One of you. I don't know which one, so I want all of your guns. I'll sit on them for the rest of the trip. Well, you're swinging a lot of weight for a man that's out of his territory, Sheriff. He's right. I'm supposed to have the say-so on this trip. Why, Clay, you seem to be getting unpopular. Sorry, Sheriff, but without some authority... You see my authority. Yeah, if you put it that way. That's the way I put it. Well, I'm going out. Sure, Fran. Just as soon as you give me your gun. Yeah. Well, listen. I am tired of taking your orders, Bucko. Just who do you think you are telling me what to do? Why, didn't you know? This is the great Clay Hollister. Claims he's the toughest man in Arizona territory. Him? Oh, oh, oh. listen. You take off them irons and I'll break you in two. This sounds more interesting than food. Sorry, I'm a peace officer. I'll have to forego that pleasure. Your gun. Drop it, Clay. Drop it. Come on, now, I've got it. Are you out of your mind? Why, no. I just don't like seeing my old friend Clay Hollister shot down. You surprise me, Gorman. After he threw you in jail and called you a tin horn? That he did, lady. But he also did something else. He kept a mob from stretching my neck. I don't like you, Hollister. But I pay my debts. Fair enough. I did get bounced around a bit, and I'd like to even that out, too. So, my hairy friend, if you'd like to bounce the chef around a little, go right ahead. What? Oh, sure. Are you sure you want to play it this way, Gorman? Quite sure. You've got a big reputation, Hollister. I want to be impressed. Come on, wall man. Chef, you win all the marbles. Thanks. All right, now you can all go outside as soon as you check your guns. Driver? Yeah. Search him. You mean the lady, too? No, I've already had that pleasure. Doctor. As you wish. But I want it back when we get to Tucson. Next. All right, prizefighter. On your feet. I ain't no prize fighter. Yes, we know. Hey, what are you? Miner or an arsenal? A oh, man has to protect himself in Arizona. Yeah, he's right, Sheriff. All right, let's go. <laughs> Nice try you made. Thanks. But a hopeless one. Can't you get it through your head that all Cahill wants is you dead? That's a lie. Why do you think they shot at the stage? I'm not interested. Sorry. All right, I'll do it my way. Cahill! Boone Cahill, I'm talking to you. One of you is a murderer. The next stop is Tucson. When we get there, you're a dead man. But, Sheriff, I thought you said you didn't know who Cahill was. I didn't, but I do now. I didn't tell you a thing. That's all right. You're safe now. There are no more stops between here and Tucson. I know what you're trying to do, but I didn't tell you anything. What are you so nervous about? 
I thought you said you weren't afraid of Cahill. I'm not. Then you've got nothing to worry about. Look here, Sheriff. We all know what you're trying to do. Forces Cahill to make a move. But personally, I can't approve of the way you're going about it. Tell me, what's your interest? <laughs> Why? Open the bag. Now, what is this? You say you're a doctor. Well, of course. Everybody knows Dr. Davis. Well, let's see what you know. Empty it. Sheriff, may I suggest... <laughs> you know, you're nervous and a little overwrought. I think these pills will fix you up just fine. No, thank you. Did you think I was your gunman? Just being careful. Empty the bag. <laughs> you know, it's a, a funny thing. I didn't know he was one of them. You did just fine. Better get this stage moving. We'll be late for your trial. You're not going to get away with this, Sheriff. You just wait till the morning. Okay, Hill's dead. The little gang's finished, and so are you. Gorman, you're now a deputy. Okay. Well, okay, Sheriff. As long as you promise not to let anybody find out. I guess that makes me the driver. Well, Anita, how do you feel? You ready to face your trial? I guess. It's almost worth it to be clear and out of all of this. I'll survive it somehow. Before I go in, I have one last request. Well, what? Well, half hour ago, I was hungry. Now I'm as starved as a timber wolf in a blizzard. Miss Torson, when we get to Tucson, I personally am going to buy you the biggest dinner in town. Thanks. My pleasure. I won't even bill it to the territory. Up, Rowdy! 